Leicester, home of the biggest upset in sporting history when Leicester City defied odds of 5,000 to 1 to win the Premier League football seven years ago. This week, it's Pools Premier League, which has rocked up here at the Morningside Arena after its stint at Milton Keynes over the last couple of years. And a field of 16 will battle it out over eight days and nights for this title. So let's see how it's all going to work in a moment. But first of all, Carl, great to be back at another matchroom event so soon after a memorable week in Poland at the World Championship. Yeah, the World Championship is the biggest event on our calendar year, but this has got a different feel about it. If you love nine ball pool, if you're a pool fan, there's no better place to be than this next week, Michael, because we have got a ton of matches to get through. We really do, and we can see how it's all going to play out here. 16 players, they'll play each other over the next five days. You get one point for every match you win. At the end of that, the bottom six are eliminated. The other 10 then go through to the next phase over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, so they all play each other again. And after that, just six will survive for the final day. Another round-robin section will then lead to the semi-finals and the final next Monday. And remember, every match that you win in each phase carries forward to the next phase. And throughout the group stage, every match will be race to five, alternate break. And here's what's coming up in this opening session. Well, what a treat to start. Two multiple world champions, Alban Ocean and Earl Strickland, kicking things off. Then it's back-to-back -back Jason Shaw, and then a double helping of Shane Van Boning, last year's world champion. The current world champion, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, will be last up in this session against Strickland. And over on two. Nice lineup there as well. Clash of the generations to get things underway. Alex Pagalion against Khalid Al Gamdi. And then you can see a real range of players throughout the afternoon. We'll have a back to back Skylar Woodward towards the end of the session and all rounding off with Alex Pagalion and Wu Kun Lin. And you can see all that on Matchroom Multisport YouTube on Table 2. All the action is on Matchroom Live throughout the week. 193 matches for us to watch. Let's get things going with the first of them. Now you can see table two in the background. That's where that match between Pagaline and Algamdi will be getting underway in a few minutes. Here on one, it's Ocean against Strickland. Great to have Earl here, Carl, isn't it? Yeah, it's always a pleasure. You know, he's he's such a fan favourite. You know, he's got the antics. He's got the game to back the antics up. Obviously, he's, he's knocking on the years now, but he can still play the game. We've seen that at the Moscone Cup. He was up 3-0 in his singles points. And can he uh, find a a closing match out here this week. I think he'll do OK. Yeah, I don't think he's actually out there in the arena at the moment. He is certainly in the venue. I know that because he was spending a huge amount of time on the practice table earlier today. Uh, there is Alban Ocean, his opponent, two-time champion of the world, came within a match of equaling Strickland's record of three world titles last year. And he got to the final and was beaten by Shane Van Boning. And here is Earl Strickland Hello, now, 61 years of age. How you doing? You OK? Right. Just to let you know, if you need an extension, the, the two balls over there, your extension... Looking at Earl's cue yes, there, Michael, he's got this big got kind of there. tennis that's, wrap that's along the it. bottom of the cue. Do you see it over there? Looks like he's changed oh, the, okay. oh, just the it, yeah, yeah, you see bottom it, yeah, of the cue okay. there, because it wasn't pink, and Earl's he's a tinkerer, isn't he? He likes to... Do things the way he feels like he'll get some and form ready of to start extra game. advantage while playing the game. Have a great game. Have a great game. Thank you, players. When you're ready, please lag for break. So the lag for break, and just to reiterate, it is alternate break. And I think with the short format, it's got to be Carl. Yeah, race to five. Same no, races. Moscone Cup, the biggest team event in the world of Q Sports. Pretty much the perfect lag from Strickland, and he will get this festival of pool for the next eight days underway for us here on Table 1. Yeah, as the matches in the days unfold, we'll oh, Strickland be posted break. of what players need to be doing, but you've got to be winning your matches, that's the main thing. They can see the break box. Let's see what they can do. It's not too bad, he's made the one in the side, that's what he's trying, that's what the players will be intending all week long if you follow the tour. We'll know by now that they're trying to pocket this one in the side. No, oh, Strickland has done that in the opener. OK, 
can he chip this in? It's very thin if he's attacking. He's gone for it. That's the one thing I feel like as you get a little older, Michael, that type of shot seems to elude your game. Why would that be? I don't know if it's the old eyes are going, is it just the back arm? You've got to stay very still, but, you know, even in fairness, when I was young, it was a shot I was never very, very good at. The old thin snip shot, but he's got a wave on there. Alden's in a little bit of trouble. He's going to need to make sure he hits this blue Extension too. Extension cool. Because if he misses it, well, Lil's going to have an easy combo. But Alden is very adept in this situation. I suppose if he misses the kick, he might move the nine. So something's going to happen here. Yeah, good kick. That's all you can do. The rest of it. Again, my nine ball is out of your hands, and certainly in that type of kick shot, he knew it was vital to make contact. This passes the nine ball, though, so opening pot here for Earl. Winning that lag, as Strickland did, can be so important in this alternate break format because it means that, of course, if it goes hill hill, you will have the break in the deciding rack. Just wants the cue ball to slow down a little. It's running near the nine because I think he's going to play this off the brown seven in the side pocket. He can draw the cue ball back a little bit. Doesn't gonna doesn't need to go crazy drawing the cue ball back. He will have a shot of this purple five. He's got a little bit too much into that. He didn't need to. He could have just made sure he pulled it back an inch or two. He'd have been fine. So now he's he's going to have to come with a good shot here. First time we've seen him talking to himself at the table in this match. It will be far from the last this week. It's a real habit of his. Good pot, though. Still possesses a good shooter's game, doesn't he, Earl? He has been around some years. Decent-sized tournaments for over 40 years now. a wild one he was trying to carry the nine and maybe bank the six but it's always going to be difficult for Earl an ocean defending champion here beat Joshua Filler in the final in Milton Keynes just over a year ago now example of playing the table he could have easily got the cue ball over on the second rail but he would have had to play that shot harder because it's so, so early on in this match he just wanted to make sure he got a shot on the nine well Strickland had his chance he arguably had a couple of chances to win that opening rack but in the end he's lost it and it's the defending champion Alban Ocean of Austria who leads 1-0 thank you yeah, he's effectively going for three in a row, Ocean, because, as I said, it was a two-year stint in Milton Keynes, but I'm including the Championship League that we had back in 2021, and it was a different format, but I think the feeling was the Premier League was a continuation of that, and as such, he's bidding for three in a row here. Puts a lot of effort in back home. Does Alvin practicing daily and keeps himself fit? And right too. We did say Alvin last Ocean year, you know, if you're going to go deep Leading in this event, to nil. it's definitely going to favour the the players that play a lot of pool because this is just it's going to be a mammoth week. Alvin to break. dry as it well the three balls just fell in at the end but he didn't make the ball he was intending to the break shot's not as easy as the players are starting to make it look let's have a look where the one goes there just hit a bit low didn't it a 
absolutely right saying it's a mammoth week. Certainly that Championship League was 52 matches he played to win us. Uh, quite to the same extent last year. 31 matches required. That's still, what, 83 matches to win this tournament over the last two years? Yeah, I think this event is a fantastic tournament if you're, you know, trying to get in stroke. You know, you're playing day after day against quality opponents. You're going to have a lot of close matches. Yeah, nice shot there. Don't blame him for taking that one on. And the table looks, looks to be sitting okay now. Well, it was hugely significant for Ocean two years ago because, of course, tournament action was only really just getting started up again after COVID. And because of the long, long route he took through that tournament, playing all those matches, he was so played in going into the rest of the year, won the World Championship, won a big event in America as well. And I think he was really set up for all that by having played so many matches over the course of that week. And He's won this title in its two different forms over the last couple of years in very different ways because he was so slow to get started in 2021, was just hanging on and hanging on and managing to stay in the tournament. Last year, with this format, he actually won all of his first 10 matches. Always plays these brand new tables and the brand new balls very well, Alden. That's because he puts himself in the deeper end of these big nine ball majors. So he knows how to play these tables. It's very slidey, very slick. The cue ball can run away from you. So he just, the last two shots is a perfect example. He's just leaving himself a longer shot on his next ball. This really underlines how short this format is. Feels like we've barely just started the match, and Ocean polishes off the eight and nine here. He'll already be almost halfway to the target of five. I think that's fine, having the short matches when you've got so many of them. Well, even itself out, if you have the little bits of luck that can make a difference in a short match over the course of the week. And with that break and run, Alvin Ocean stretches his lead over Earl Strickland to 2-0. From the other table, Alex Pagaline has won the opener against Khalid Al Gamdi of Saudi Arabia, but the young man looks like he's about to make it one all in that one. Yeah, remember last year, Michael, where uh, Max Lechner, he was having a nightmare, wasn't he, as the days continued? I can't remember how many lost 10 11 on the spin or something like that, was it? Yeah, and he, he really turned around to the extent that he got himself right back in the tournament, and it just shows if it takes you a long time to get that first win it actually just becomes harder and harder with every match that goes on because it gets in your head, you're being reminded of it by everyone. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. That's what I was kind of getting at, even though, you know, you can be playing the first couple of matches. It's still important to get that win on the board, even though you've got Rack lots three. of pool to play. Now Strickland to break. Trailing two racks to nil. Yeah, the big question, of course, is how many wins you'll need from your 15 matches. Well, last year, down to Al Shaheen and Yap, both won six, and then it came back to a count back of racks. So, I guess six is the least you're aiming for, but of course, Yap got six last year and it still didn't get him through. So, really, the target's got to be seven at least. That's nearly half the matches. Dry break from Earl. Albin can pot this up the rail, but whenever you're going across the bed of the table, it just never seems easy to sight it. But the fact that he's won the opening two and he's had some table time. It's funny, you can practice, can't you? You know, there's two practice tables, kind of where we're sat, Michael, just next to us, and, you know, the players will be practicing away, but there's nothing like getting out there. Obviously, this event is played behind Extension closed doors, cool. so there's not a load of fans here watching, but it's still different when you go out there and you sat in that chair. He 
Is he taking this on? He isn't. Doesn't fancy it. So showing this this match to respect could have easily took a go at that ball. Didn't fancy it. Clash of greats, and you could say these are the two most successful players there have ever been in the World Championship. Strickland, the only three-time winner. Ocean, one of a number of two-time winners, but he's the only one of those who's also been in two finals. So really, from that point of view, they're the two best players in the history of that tournament, which we saw have its latest renewal in Poland just a few weeks ago. Yeah, four finals for Albin, that is... That is a great stat. Good safety from Earl. This will wind Earl up. No, he's not really a fan of the jump cue. It's an easy jump shot. Not to make it, but to hit it. To get it over the seven. But at least Earl's going to see a piece of this one ball. How do you think he's going to cope with this format, Carl? The fact that Strickland, he doesn't play much tournament pool nowadays and he's 61 years of age. Is that going to be a factor for him, trying to deal with the sheer volume of matches over these few days? I mean, he does play a lot of pool. He does practice a lot still. You know, he plays a lot of tennis. He goes running, so... He's a unique 61-year-old, isn't he? I mean... Even when you see him about the venue, you know, he's walking very quickly. He's not... He's not struggling. I just think when you've watched Earl over the last decade or so, you know, he can still play a lot of the shots, but he just seems to maybe not kill matches off as good as the younger breed. Oh, that's a nice shot there from Albin. Obviously, he couldn't really do much with the cue ball, but still the knowledge there to make sure you hit the one to pocket it. I'm surprised Alvin didn't try and go a bit further with the cue ball, though, because, I mean, if he couldn't, fair enough, but he's really give the initiative back to Earl, here. Earl needs the two to slow down. It's a little pacey. Four balls come to the rescue. Two one now to Alex Pagalion on table two against Khalid Al Gamdi. This is a great event for Khalid Al Gamdi, isn't it? Because 17 years of age, he won the SVB Junior Open at last year's US Open Nine Ball Championships, and the fact that he has been given an invitation to play in this tournament, you know, someone like Albin and Sanchez, obviously they they're all about winning the big majors. We know that, but. 17 years of age, Khalid, the amount of matches he's going to get to play here this week, this is this is just something money can't buy. He's oil potted the six, he doesn't want it to go in, he doesn't want it to go in. Maybe you can see the edge <laughs> of this two. Earl starts to beat himself up a bit, doesn't he? You know, he's been around the game a long time. But it just seems to get him still, doesn't it? Sometimes it almost feels as though we're made redundant. He does the commentary himself out there. That was a great shot, by the way. He can still come with a good shot. He's going to need another good one here, though. Anytime there's a bit of distance, it's probably not where he's as accurate. But he can still play. He's come with two good shots there as well. Are big moments for him because he's got a clear chance here now to get on the board. Take it then. That's sending the sort of messages to Ocean that he doesn't want to send, but he should run it out from here. Just likes to get on with it as well, doesn't he? He's not going to need the shot clock much. He's up. He'd have a chance in the opener. But it looks like this is going to be the first rack for Earl the Pearl Strickland. And there is the nine. It was a good rack. Earl Strickland wins the rack. Yep, and he's won it. And in this clash of the only two multiple world champions in the field here, 
of an Ocean's lead is now reduced to 2-1. So we talked there about the physical challenge, the mental challenge for Strickland of this tournament. But I was saying there, you're going to need six, maybe seven wins to get through to the next phase. So how do you rate his chances of doing that? Do you know what? We'll have to go to a break, and we'll discuss it straight after that. Welcome back to Leicester on the opening day of the Premier League pool. Alvin Ocean leading Earl Strickland 2-1. Alvin Ocean to break. Leading two racks Just getting on the board by winning rack three there. Alvin trying to play that yellow one in the side. Yeah, there you go. That is a good break. When this new break rule was implemented last season, it was, it was all about making the break a little harder, where you feel like you've got to hit the ball a certain way. And Albin's opening break shot, you could see he missed the one ball, but this time he's really found that hitting point. And the players, of course, they're going to become a lot more adapted. He's not going to be happy with this one, though. He wanted the cue ball way off the rail. He's not got much of an angle, so he may have to just draw this ball back a little bit. Can he still pinch a bit? No, he's going low. So he's going to be playing for the pink four up into the top left corner. Looking to go 3-1 here. It is 3-1 on the other table. Alex Pagalion has won the fourth rack against Khalid Al-Gamdi. And he's got a chance to stretch that to 4-1 now. Extension call. <laughs> Just try and float the cue ball past the six. Yeah, you see coming off this rail. That's going to be nice. Good early signs here, Carl. He's looking sharp. Yeah, he's played. Um, he's played some good stuff so far. So three balls down off the break. And from there, set to complete his second break and run of the match. Go two clear once again. Oh, can you believe that? Just when we were talking about how sharp he was looking. Well, I nearly said he's landed a little bit short, but you're so used to the pros potting everything. I just I never really bothered, but you can miss them now and again. You really can. He talked about how Strickland gets in his own Strickland head a bit. Well, rack. certainly Alban Ocean can do that from time to time as well, and that's bound to upset his thinking. Well, what it is is you, 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 you're desperate for the cue ball to land straight, and when you come up a little shy, you can just miss them. You, we've all missed them over the years. Jeremy Jones all the way from the US has 
just popped into the commentary box to say hello to us. So he'll be along later with Alex Laley to commentate on the uh, matches Shaw against Siu Sioa and then Shane Van Boney against Wu Kun Lin. How different is that nine ball going to turn this match around now? Because it was all going Albin's way. Earl was a little, not frustrated, but you could see things maybe starting to unravel. But Earl's going to have the break. It would be huge for him if he could get a win like this on the opening day. And we were talking about that earlier. How do you rate his chances of getting through this to reach the second phase? He's going to have to win least six maybe seven matches how capable is he of doing that i still think he is capable i really i really do it's just i mean he's not going to hold himself together we know we know that at some point things are going to start to to get in earl's head that's just his character but it is a race to five, the short races. He's going to have to figure the break out, but at least he's got time to figure the break out. This is not like an, a regular pool event where it could be too little too late, couldn't it? This is, you know, he's going to get a lot of matches. Definitely needs to improve on the break, doesn't he? Because he's had three now in this match and two of them have been dry. I think with that miss on the nine from Ocean, he'll be able to put it out of his head quite quickly if he just gets back into rhythm again. But if a few more things start to go against him, either self-inflicted or otherwise, we've seen in the past how he can really let himself get bogged down in that thinking. This is going to be interesting. Can Earl see the edge? Because for a second it looked like Earl was in a world of trouble. He still is in trouble. But the fact that the eight come back up and knock the cue ball away... Maybe he can bend it a little bit, so it is a mistake from Alvin again. Oh, and he could see the edge. Now he's going to be kicking. Now this is the part of game where, you know, it's out of your hands. Alvin's got to play the shot here and does he get away with one or does he leave Earl a shot? Well, maybe there's a piece of that sticking out as well. I mean, it doesn't look like Extension it. Cool. Looks like he's hooked. Kicking at this full, it could go in the right centre pocket. Got to be patient to the game. This is the game of pool. This is nine ball. You've always got to play the right shot. Earl played a good safety. This time he's created a chance. Now Gamdi looks to be struggling a bit. Just had a bad miss on the one in rack six against Alex Pagalion, who's now in play with a chance to close that out and become the first winner in this season's Premier League. Signs of Earl Strickland, they're still there. It was a good shot. Just plays the game different, doesn't it? Just, just hits the cue ball different. Not a lot of players nowadays use the loop bridge. There's a lot more old than bridges, but Earl still likes the loop bridge. Of the inaugural World Championship. Germany back in 1990 won it again the next year and incredibly he remains the only player to have successfully defended us I mean won again in 2002 Became the first three-time winner and again he remains the only one to have done that certainly five US opens no no it doesn't no. the record with Shane Van Boning in that tournament. Now, he's asking for the cue ball to be cleaned. Wanted to clarify whether or not the clock stops, and he's been told that it doesn't. So extension cool. Inevitably, he's ended up having to use his extension here, but why not? It's late in the rack, so no big problem. Yeah, and he's a little thin on this. It's not where he wanted to be. The pocket will swallow it up on day one, we know that. But that's why, you know, you've got to stay 
in the right headspace because you do have an extension. You'll know that now for the rest of the week that the clock isn't stopped in the cue ball cleaning the scenario. Right. So Alban Ocean led 2 0 in this match. But now for the first time he trails. That's three in a row for Strickland, who now leads 3 2. Yeah, more importantly, it was a good run out from Earl. He has played a lot of pool. He said before he's been winning titles over 40 years. But there's nothing like running the table like he just has, just to still give you that little bit of confidence. Now, the Dayton Open was the first uh, tournament of note that he won in America back in 1982, when his first US Open as long ago as 1984. And he actually had quite a span of those five, because the last of his titles was in 2000. He won the US Open in three different decades, basically. Years of age, remember? Ocean, we have to recall, looked for all the world as though he was going 3-1 up. A really surprising miss on the nine. And he finds himself breaking while trailing for Brexit. the first time in this match. Albert Ocean to break. Trailing three racks to two. Oh, he's been very fortunate there, very fortunate, as he got a shot on the two. Difficult to see here. Cue ball can get lost. Here's another look. Watch the cue ball comes off the side rail. Looks like he's going to scratch. It, it's both points. And he flukes the one in the corner. Can he pop the two? I think he can, Michael. Well, the balls are placed. In addition to that, he's had about four bits of good fortune in one shot there. This is what makes pool unique, though, because, you know, you break off and you never know what the table's going to give you. It's different every time. Some days... It's going to be your day, you're going to get the fortune, and all the days you have a complete nightmare. Have our first result on table two. Alex Pagalion has beaten Khalid Al Gamdi of Saudi Arabia 5 1. Next up over there will be Konrad Yasushin of Poland against Bong Duk Tien of Vietnam. Both of those players making their debut in this tournament. say Ocean closing in here and his second break and run of the match but then again we said that about 10 minutes ago and it didn't happen yeah still got to get cue ball past the eight and you see you can you can land short on that but he's landed perfect so this match is yeah, now the cue balls come more in line with the nine in the pocket so this is this is good enough and this is to tie the match up he does at 3 all. What a treat this is on the opening day. Clash of two of the best players we've ever seen. Multiple world champions, as I was saying. And they're all level once again at three apiece. Have more for you in a moment.
Well, it's amazing how much can happen, even in a race to five, and we're still some way from the end. Alban Ocean was 2-0 in front. Rack seven. A really surprising miss on the nine break. when it looked like it was going 3-1. Strickland turned it around for 3-2. And then with uh, plenty of fortune off the break, Ocean went up to run out from there and win rack six to level again. Not quite got the breakdown at all. It'd be interesting to find out how much preparation with this break rule he's actually done because he's hitting it a little full and he actually hit a little bit of topspin on the cue ball there so he's got work to do regarding the break shot well he'd be brave to take this one on he does like to go for his shots we know that I wouldn't blame him for having a go Come on, Earl, take it on. You've got it in the locker. We know you have. I think the fact that he stood there looking at it so long tells you he doesn't want to take it on. Extension called. And usually, if you've got a bit of doubt, I don't think you should bother. Is he going for it? Let's have a look. No, he didn't. He was just trying to play safe. He was trying to use the blue two and the pink four. He's left a piece of this for Albin. This is where Albin excels, though. I think with Albin, you're going to get the odd miss, aren't you, when he's running the ball? He's obviously a very good potter, Michael, but I think he's prone to, you know, maybe missing the odd one or two here and there. But this is where he does excel at the game. Extension call. You look at his game and his career as a whole, and I use many very positive words about him, but dependable wouldn't necessarily be one. And you see that in his results as well. You look at last year where he did so well in so many big events, but he also lost 9 0 to Robbie Capito at the UK Open. So there is that bit of unpredictability about him in every sense. Yeah, he's, he, he just kind of always seems to play the right shot. Like there, he didn't try and do something that wasn't really there. He knew that the, the hook was always going to be difficult. Earl's firing it across bank as he fluked it. He has. Earl the Pearl with a bit of luck. The hand was up early, wasn't it? He knew long before it dropped that that was going in. Well, fair is fair, though, isn't it? Because Ocean had plenty of luck off the break in the previous rack. This is a great chance now. It really is. It's all about just getting an angle on the green six. Coming over for the seven. Vital you leave a bit of an angle on the seven. Straight on the seven is a disaster. A funny shot on the pool table, that what Earl's just played, because it's so easy to under hit the cue ball or over hit it he's got to be happy with that he can just pull the cue ball back out no he led 3-2 there's nothing he could do about it in rack six his ocean ran out from the break Strickland goes in front again, and this time it takes him to the right. hill at 4-3. Swiftly underway in the second match over on table two. Konrad Yasushin of Poland has won the opener against Long Duc Tien. One of the ever-growing number of strong Vietnamese players on the scene. What would be the significance of this for Strickland if he could start off with a win over someone of Ocean's quality and standing? I think it's just a case of he's going to feel good in his head space, isn't he? Because, you know, you can... We, we all expected Albin to win this match. No disrespect to Will. It is a short race, but you'd still fancy Albin. Obviously, Albin can still win the match, but the way the match was going, it looked like it was going to go 3-1. It didn't. And the match has turned around a little bit. Earl has given himself a chance. 
This is one of the differences with the alternate Rack break format. Eight. You could be in this situation, Out one away from break. victory, one ahead of your Turning opponent. Four racks to three. Of course, if the other guy wins the rack, he's then going to have the break in the decider if you have winner breaks. But in this, of course, Strickland knows whatever happens here, he will have the break in the next rack. If it goes that far, which it will, because Alban Ocean has had a golden break. Alban Ocean wins the rack. Like I said, Carl, it's amazing how much can happen, even in a short match of this duration. Yeah, it, it was the cue ball. The cue ball fired off the rail, flicked the two, and made the nine. I mean, that is heartbreak for Earl, because to win a rap like that for Albin, to tie up at Hill Hill, he's had nothing to do. There's been no pressure, no shots to play. Amazing. Think about it, if he hadn't missed that nine, uh, the fourth rack, Ocean would have won all four of his breaking racks without Strickland coming to the table in any of them. But Strickland is coming to the table now. As we've said, he struggled with the break throughout this match, trying to figure it out. He could really do with figuring it out on this shot. Players over the years have often felt like the nine ball should be spotted off the break. That's what the players would vote in. If they had the option, there's no doubt about it, because... You know, when you win a rack like that, it's, it's a little bit disappointing. It's kind of gives the game a bit of injustice, doesn't it? Oh, because Strickland's break. Anyway, he'll break in. He'll, he'll. He was trying to use a bit of reverse psychology on the cue ball there, declaring the scratch. For a moment, he would have believed push. the cue ball was from scratch. Push out has been called. You must nominate the push. After the break shot, the very next shot, you can always play a push out. So after this push shot, Albin is basically going to have play the shot or put Earl back in. Control passed. We set the clock to 30 seconds, please. I think Earl's got to shoot at this ball. I think he can just try and pop the one. Cue ball into the six. That leaves the shot on the three. The four doesn't have to do anything silly with the three because the four's over to the left. Hey, listen, this is not easy. I'm not saying he has to take it on. Nope. It's gone wrong, no. Nope. Albin's done right. The safety shot has gone wrong. We set the clock, please. Extension code. Bill can just sit and watch now. The safety shot's gone wrong. Albin's got a good chance here. It'll be all about this shot now. He's got a bit of an angle, so he's got to probably just float in between the brown seven and the green six. Leave the cue ball on that side rail. That's why I feel like Earl should have maybe gone for the pot there. Go down with the cue swinging. happens now Strickland has proved to himself more than anything that he can compete with these players the very best here in the opening match isn't to win it the fact that he's made such a contest of it it's bound to give him belief moving forward it's not bad First glance, I thought it was going to be a little bit short. This is this, this is thinner than what that camera angle tells you, so he's got to take a bit of care here. More about the cue ball than the actual pot, to be honest.
What's he done there? That was a good shot. Very good shot. Look at the cue ball there. It's absolutely perfect, this match. He's going to be over now. All these balls are sat absolutely perfect. We're going to see a lot of matches here over the next eight days and nights in Leicester. But we'll see one more eventful and turbulent than this one. Ocean had that dreadful miss on the nine when it looked as though he was going to lead 3-1. Opened the door for Strickland. Turned it round to lead 3-2, having trailed 2-0 at one stage. Strickland led again at 4-3. Ocean pulled out the golden break. Now, won the deciding rack to just get over the line. He started with 10 wins in a row in this tournament last year. He's got his first win on the board straight away, this time as well. Alvin Ocean then defeats Earl Strickland in a really entertaining contest by five racks to four. Next up, it's the Anglo-Scottish clash. It's Chris Melling and Jason Shaw in a few minutes' time. tables are designed and manufactured from the highest quality sustainable hardwoods utilizing world-renowned designs diamond tables are unparalleled for playability and durability after all they are designed by players for players The championship is being played with the new RMS tournament set. Featuring a unique molecular structure, it guarantees razor-sharp precision and unsurpassed longevity. Unquestionably the best pool balls in the world, this set is available in a TV and a value-packed version, as well as in the new My RMF Ranger of Ball and Q cases. Now you can bring and play with the best ball set everywhere you go. My RMF, bringing new dimensions to your billiards experience. Of the Kazoo Champion of Champions! It's time for a little bit of damage down
champion of champions, Ronnie the Rocket O'Sullivan! Even the scoreline of 5-4 doesn't even begin to do justice to the amount of drama and intrigue we saw in that opening match. Alvin Ocean, a ball away from leading 3-1, found himself trailing Earl Strickland 3-2. Later was 4-3 down. The golden break took it to a hill-hill finish, but Ocean won that, and so completes a 5-4 victory. The defending champion then off to a winning start. We've got a double helping of Shane Van Boning to come a little later on this table. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, the current world champion, also up. But first, it's back-to-back -back Jason Shaw, and we'll see him in action in just a few moments' time. Alex Pagalain has already won 5-1 against Khalid Al Gamdi on table two. Conrad Yasushin is a few balls away from leading 4-0 against Long Duk Tien. And then Earl Strickland will be back on there to play Noyuki Oi quite shortly, it seems. Alban Ocean's next match is also on two against Skylar Woodward, who we'll see a couple of times in a row over on two. And then it's Alex Pagalain against Wu Kun Lin. Well, we're watching the action on table one. It's an all-British encounter. Jason Shaw against Chris Melling. What do you think of this one, Carl? Yeah, this is an intriguing match we've got here on day one. I always feel like... Jason Shaw wins the leg. It's a bit of banter between these two. I always want to get the win over each other. <coughs> First rack, Jason Shaw to break. Talk about Jason in a second and what he's been up to, but there you see he's breaking off with the playing cue and with an open bridge. What a break that is to get things started. Just look at that. Four balls down, wow. Rifled through them. He's not going to have an easy opener, though, even though he has potted four balls. You can see he can't pot it past the pink. Cutting it into the top right is well, its a horrible shot, so there is work to be done here. Just see there the back of Jason's queue, no longer using the extension. He has got rid of the extension on the back of his queue. For many years now, he's been using with a probably a 70 inch queue, I bet. 68, 70 inch queue. So, what would be the thinking behind making that change? Well, I know he's been over in Sheffield before Extension he's call. come here. He's been doing some work over there. Mr. Phoenix on the snooker table, and he's been looking at his cue action. Now that's Steve Feeney, the inventor of the fabled sight right system. Beautiful shot there from Chris. Of snooker, that's very much the background Chris Melling comes from. Was on the professional snooker tour for some time, reached number 79 in the world, beat some very good players. Melling currently number 52 in the world in pool, but I think perhaps reflects he's got other commitments going on, a bit of a Q Sports all rounder. He's a better player than that ranking would indicate. Uh, no 
time at all, really. He's mopped up this opening rack. Four balls down off the break for Jason Shaw, but it didn't get him anywhere. Melling leads 1-0. Yeah, this event will suit Chris. The fact that he does play a lot of English eight ball, he's not really been playing much nine ball. He comes to the events he can, you know, he played US Open, did very well there. Obviously, it was the World Nine Ball Championship, but the fact that he's going to get to play a lot of matches will definitely suit Chris this week. Chance for him to play his way in, I guess. Ooh. Still a couple of the mainstays, really, of British pool, as it were. I've been hoping to see a few more new names make their way through in recent years. It just hasn't happened at all. Still, these guys, Imran Majid, Elliot Sanderson, these are the names on the British scene. Are you aware of any anyone coming through who has the potential to become one of the best right. British players to challenge these guys? Yeah. No, not not really. I was just thinking then. I know a few years ago, obviously the Brits, you know, when we we had a stage of playing on the European Tour where a Brit was in the final every single one. That went on for quite quite a while. And obviously, the fact that Appleton won a lot of the big majors. You know, one of us was always lurking somewhere, but it has seemed to have fell behind a little bit. But the fact that you know, Matchroom of really got the teeth into the world of nine ball and you know we have a, a big nine ball world tour now things will change it's all about the younger generation watching these two guys at the table now and want to want to be out there we saw at the uk open last may there were quite a few british players who were able to show a bit of potential win a couple of matches but nobody who really looked like they were going to take that next step up we'll see in time well, that was a nice shot there from Christopher. Had to go rail first, and Chris is having a bit of a resurgence in Q Sports. There was a while where he kind of gone a little bit. You know, he weren't really doing much. He was struggling, but of late, he's doing real good, some real good stuff, especially on the small table. And I think because he's doing well on the small table, he's he's giving him confidence on the big. And such a natural player, just gets on with it. Yeah, the small table, we're referring to eight ball, where he's been world champion a couple of times. You also mentioned uh, earlier on the US Open quarter finalist there back in October in Atlantic City, was eventually beaten by the Austrian Max Lechner, who went on to reach the final. Well, this has been quick, Chris hasn't Melling it? Wins the rack. Chris Melling already leading 2 0 with that break and run. This match could easily be over in 20 minutes. That's just the style of not just Chris Jason as well. He likes to, you know, play his natural game. All over pretty quickly over on table two. Konrad Yasushin of Poland, 5 0 winner over Yong Duk Tien of Vietnam. Earl Strickland will be back into action very, very quickly after that narrow loss to Alban Ocean. He's, he's next on two against Noyuki Oi. Late call up for this event. Yeah, table two is available on Matru Multisport YouTube channel. Rack three. So Jason Shaw's gadgets break. out and get both matches on. Two racks to nil. this break from Jason this open bridge break I don't know he's just not sitting too well with me Jason Shaw 34 years of age from Scotland based in the United States for some time now ranked number six in the world relatively early from the world championship a few weeks ago in Poland. Beaten in the last 32 by John Mora. So going out at that stage for the second year in a row. Well, 
Connor's a good shot. He's got a nice angle. He can just roll the cue ball through. Seven to the eight. Needs a little bit of respect. Yeah, if you can draw the cue ball back and play the eight in the bottom left, I think that's what he will play. So he's just had a walk Extension around to cool. see if that is available. Well, he's playing a power draw because he's using the loop bridge. Yeah, he's trying to come underneath it with spin. This isn't going to work out good. It's not going to work out good. Can he still thin this one in? Well, he's been fortunate there. Boy, has he been fortunate to leave a pot there. Just enough distance between the cue ball and the eight to make the pot and a routine nine to follow. So a high quality start. Chris Melling Jason had a Shaw run out that. from the break to go 2 0 in front. Jason Shaw has replied in the same style. He now trails 2 1. Thank you. Opening day at the Morningside Arena in Leicester. Plenty of drama in the first match on table one as Alban Ocean edged out Earl Strickland in a Hill Hill finish. So much quality in the Chris early Melling's stages break. here. Chris Melling leading the old British one. clash with Jason Shaw 2 1. Melling has the break in rack four. Made the one. There's no shot on the two. That's the kind of bridge on that I kind of like to see the players using, the one that Chris was using, that long loop bridge. So you see SVB using a lot, and there's no better breaker than Shane. Push out cold. Jason, your choice. Just tying another ball up there was Chris. Now you can see the six doesn't pot. Jason's got the option, play this shot or give it back to Chris. Foul. I'd like that one again. I really would. Ball in hand. Please stop the clock.
Put the cue ball anywhere you want on a foul. Extension called. More often than not, I think when you get ball in hand, it tends to lead to end of rack. But of course, it was obvious from the way the balls were sitting, it wasn't going to be as straightforward as that. In this situation, a bit of figuring out to do. Oh, he's going to that cue ball well. He really did. The seven nines a combo. Can Jason use the cue ball? Maybe there's too much gap now you can see from that angle. Extension call. Cool. So the last two shots from Shaw in the safety department have not been very good at all. Yeah. yeah. This error looks much more likely to cost them than the previous one. Said it wasn't a straightforward situation at all. Melling was coming into, even with ball in hand. So the seven will probably just flow over near the other corner. That way Chris can control the cue ball. And you see the seven just comes over nicely. That's why Shaw couldn't attack the kick combo on the previous shot he played. And all in all, Chris looks to be queuing all right, doesn't he? He really does. Yep, and he's two clear again now at 3-1. And I always feel it's important at the start of a tournament like this just to clarify a few things. And you saw the combination there on played on the 7-8. So long as you hit the lowest value ball remaining on the table first, then any pot is legal and it keeps you at the table. So that's why the 7 was the lowest value ball on the table. He hit that first. That's why it was OK to then pot the 8 and then go on to pop the seven after that. So Chris Melling leading 3-1, just getting started over on the other table, Noyuki Oi of Japan, a very late call-up for this tournament, against Earl Strickland, the 61-year-old three-time world champion who was just edged out 5-4 by Alban Ocean on the main table a little earlier. Oi has a good chance to win the opening rack. Saying this is the first of two matches in a row for sure on the main table. Whatever happens in this one, he'll be staying on to face Seo Seoa of South Korea. Two female players in the field. Rack five. Jason Shaw to break. Training three racks to one. Something of a must win rack for sure. If he loses it, Melling will be breaking on the hill. Shot on the two. Problem here is the next ball is the pink four. So if you was to pop this in the left corner, extension call. Cue ball's running towards that side, so it's very difficult to get on the four. Can he also chop it in the centre pocket as well? He's always he's out of sorts, isn't he, Jay? He really is. So many loose shots we've seen already. Rack five. 
when you've used a massive extension on the back of the cue, it makes the cue ball seem easier to play positional shots. It's like you don't have to hit things with as much power. The cue helps you a lot more. So the fact that he's, took, he's completely took the extension off, it's going to be interesting to see how he uh, unfolds this week. You mentioned he's been working with Steve Feeney, the sight right guru, and it's led to much success for many players, most notably Mark Williams, who turned around his snooker career and won his third world title five years ago now, having worked with Feeney. But it takes a bit of time for a player to really, in his heart, start believing in a method like that. Maybe this is going to be a week of transition for Jason Shaw from that point of view. Oh, but he's got another chance in this rack. Wow, what a mistake from Melling. He's looked good in the balls. Look at this one. Rare day, you'll see two players of this quality and experience. Both have a really bad miss in the same rack. We've seen it here. What a lifeline this is for Jay. Looked like going 4-1 down, somehow. He's going to pinch the rack. Yep, he had a bad miss on the two. Melling handed the initiative back to him. With a really bad miss of his own on the six. And instead of breaking on the hill at 4-1, Melling finds his lead reduced to a single rack now at 3-2. Also leading by a single rack is Noyuki Oi. 1-0 up against Earl Strickland over on table two. Thank you. Surprisingly, Shaw keen to get on with us after... Back to twist at the end of rack five. If you weren't with us at the start of the show, just to reiterate what's going on here, 16 players, they'll all play each other once between now and Friday night, and you get one point for every match you win, every match race to five. The top ten players will then go through to the second phase, where they'll all play each other again over two days, and then six will survive for the final day next Monday. One last round robin section, and that will lead on to the top four going through to the semi-finals. And every match you win carries forward. It doesn't reset at the start of phase two or phase three. Every win will count throughout the tournament. So, as we've said, probably six, maybe seven wins needed to get through to the second phase. And some players will get to that number quite early on. And then, even before phase one is over, they're already playing to try to rack up more wins to survive the second phase and get through to the last day. Format which produced much drama at the end of each of the phases last year. No doubt it'll be the same Rack again six. in 2023. That's One all now break. on table two between Oi and Strickland. Two. Back here, it's Melling breaking at three two up. The two ball seems to be going over near that side rail, causing problems off the break for both players, and it's caused another problem here because the two will not pass the pink four. He may try and bank this two twice across, leaving it near the top rail, get the cue ball near the six. Oh, he's miss hit this as well. This is turning into a Bit of a comedy of errors from both Chris and Jason. They met in quite a high-profile setting last year. They were on opposing teams at the World Cup of Pool in Brentwood. Helling teamed up with Imran Majid as the Great Britain B team. They took on Great Britain A, which was Shaw and Elliot Sanderson, and the B team won 7-0 in a first-round match. Went on to get to the quarter-finals. Back in Brentwood in May for the World Masters. Well, Chris can see an edge of the two. Extension called.
Pau. Wonder if he was ball in hand. Trying to play a two-way cross the bank there. I know he was trying to duck the cue ball down towards that corner, but again, it's a bad shot. Norm, we were talking about how good the quality was, but I mean, it's been a story of errors, both punished and unpunished since then. You know, it's well documented. Chris plays every version of Q Sport you can possibly, you know, try. Well, most of them anyway. And I think when you're playing a version of pool at the highest level, I think it's always going to catch you out. And the fact that it probably doesn't play as much rotation pool as the, the other one, the small ball game. I think the physics of the game, the cue ball, how the balls react is where it's going to catch you out. And we've seen that twice now from Chris in his previous. How quickly it can all turn. It was only about five minutes ago, it looked as though Jason Shaw was going to be trailing 4-1. His opponent breaking on the hill. of that door has leveled at three all rack. and he'll be breaking in rack seven in just a moment This Anglo-Scottish clash between Jason Shaw and Jason Chris Shaw Melling right. is developing into a question of who's going to make the fewer racks. mistakes. They both had plenty of them in the last few racks. From 3-1 down, Shaw has levelled at 3-all. This game has changed on its head. Chris had a wonderful chance to go 4-1 up and probably put the match to bed and just look at the layout here for Jay. He's got an open shot at the two. Got to get on this three, though. Not easy. Not actually too bad, that. Cue ball was always going to react a little weird because he was striking down off the rail. This is the type of shot when you're changing things with your cue action or your equipment. This is where it's going to test you. This is the type of shot where you've got to feel good. 
Nicely done. It wasn't a great 2022 for sure in the very biggest events. In the last 16 of the European Open, beaten by Joshua Filler, but it was actually the best run he had in those big full field matchroom tournaments. Did win the International Open in Virginia in November, beat Viktor Zelinski in the final, and won two more Turning Stone titles. Another one of those. Already this year, extending his record to nine overall after a really close finish against Skylar Woodward. Acknowledge that lost his focus and a bit of his desire and passion for some time, and I think that win in Virginia signaled that it is coming back for him. The second time in the match, Shaw is going to run out from the break. A very brief seventh rack has gone his way, which means he leads for the first time in the match on the hill at 4-3. Three. Three, 3-1 now to Noyuki Oi on the other table against Earl Strickland. Who would have thought Jason Shaw would be on four? before Melling in this match. There were just three balls left for Chris. It's home and dry and I know there's a lot of pool to play, but losing a match like this would hurt, especially against your mate, Jason. He's gonna get ribbed all day long. He'll be in the practice room, winding each other up all day. It's gonna be a long day for Chris if he loses this one. The, the wind ups does Jason. Don't know, is it better? From that point of view, to be his friend or his enemy. He's probably harsher on his mates. Of course, is pretty much everyone in the game. Such a friendly chap, Jason Shaw. So is this guy, Chris Melling. He's got to find an answer here. He's lost three racks in a row now. He has to win this one. Rack eight. Chris Melling to break, trailing four racks to three. This finished for him, Carl. He's made the one in the side, he's <coughs> intended, he's got a shot of the two, it's very thin though. Balls running away. Feel like if he misses the six, it's going up towards the five, so that doesn't offer a lot. May play this with a bit of left spin and try and crash into the six and three. That makes the pot tougher. So he's played. Or maybe he played the kick. Maybe he played the kick. Yep, he did. When he came round, I thought he was looking the two balls to bump into him. So good shot there from Chris. Kick and stick is what we call it in the game. Extension called. Yeah, one extension allows per rack over and above the Normal 30 seconds that you get. Well, if you are watching both tables, you will have just seen Earl the Pearl Strickland firing a lovely bank shot over on table two. Opposed to 3 2 now against Nuki Oi. A little bit of luck here. Does Jay, as the combo set up, it's close. Combination can be made. It's all about where the cue ball and the two ball is going to finish. Extension call. Two nine combo looks close. 
If the two goes in the side, obviously he's going to play it, but just looking at it, it looks to be close, doesn't it? Spot. I've talked about him as an all-rounder, his eight-ball career, time on the snooker tour, but he is a very experienced nine-ball player as well. He's been in a couple of Moscone Cup teams over a decade ago now, both times on the winning side. One of those, he was MVP. More likely than not, to say the least, right now, that we're going to see our second Hill Hill finish on the main table already today. Over on the cue ball, now it's stopped. That's okay. Got to get the cue ball back twice across. see the power Chris can generate on the cue ball drawing it back for the nine in the side we're about to go hill hill yeah, Chris Melling had lost three racks in a row he simply couldn't afford to lose this one and he hasn't so Chris Melling draws level at four all sure though we'll have the break in the decisive rack Earl Strickland over on table two has closed to one behind against Noyuki Oi. It's 3 2 there now. I think when we see the big name players in this event match up, you're going to see a lot of 5 3s, 5 4s. Did see that last year as well. There was a lot of closer matches. It's going to be Jason to break. It's the first match both players have played in this year's Premier League pool. I think it's fair to say it's a big little rack, this one, even though it's the first game, Michael. Yeah, it is, because kind of particularly from Shaw's point of view, if he wins this, he goes into a second match against Seo Seoa with a chance to be two out of two very early on. If he loses it, he goes into that under just a little bit of pressure already. Yeah, Hill Hill against Chris Mellon, and then he stays on the table to play. See us so. I mean, this is going to bring up a lot of interesting matchup. This this Premier League pool. Siding rack. Jason Shaw to break. Rifling through the balls, three down and one break, four balls down and another. What's he got here? He scratched. Oh, it stayed dry, it was sliding over the spin. Just help the cue ball stay alive. Here's another look, watch the cue ball here. It spins off this bottom rail, but then the spin off the jaw just helped it stay. Absolutely killed the pace out of us. Earl Strickland perhaps heading for another close finish. He's on the eight, a couple of balls away from levelling at three all against Oi. Going to be happy with that. He's not going to be happy with that. Chris has got the jump cue, but he may go back for his playing cue. Yeah, I think it's a little closer to the nine than he realised. Extension call. Cool. Going off the bottom rail. Could also go off the side rail, but I think where the two's landed, it's near the bottom jaw. Chris does pride himself. These type of shots, kicking the ball. It's there. He was a big favourite to make that, don't get me wrong. Just needs a bit of attention though. There's the sixth ball. Maybe he can slide around the back of it off two rails. Yeah, he's jacking down on it slightly. Yeah, there you go, watch the slide, two rails. The bump is okay. Didn't want the bump. Well, I say it's okay. Now the sixth ball is another big ball. 
You're always trying to look for a natural angle when you're potting it. He's overdone it. He's overdone it. It always looked likely if he was going to miss it, it would be that way with the overcut. So, another twist, but what is Shaw left with here? Get through the gap to us. If he can't and he goes rail first, he's got to be careful of the scratch in the top corner. See how the cue ball is coming up towards that way? He will have known that, he will have assessed that. Extension called. Safety shot. Oh, another poor safety shot. His safety game in this match has been dreadful. Yeah, I don't think that's overly harsh by any means. So many shots. It's remarkable to have that many errors in a relatively short match. And it's such an important part of the game. It's not all about putting the balls, break and runs, because sometimes the balls go ugly. Oh, that was a good pot. That was more difficult than it looked. Yep, absolutely. And Nelly in a big favourite now. It's not a guarantee by any means, but I expect to see it out from here. scratched oh Fun. my word he's had chance after chance in this match to put it to bed and somehow Ball in hand. eagle eye jason shaw looks like he's gonna win this point unbelievable yeah. yeah absolutely and even with all the mistakes we've seen really with only three balls left on the table shaw couldn't have asked for a much better chance than this to finish it and chris melling more than anything will be left to rue that missed six ball in the fifth rack he was three balls away from breaking on the hill at 4-1. But it all turned around after that. Shaw led 4-3. Melling did level again. He had his chance just there to take it. But it's Jason Shaw who emerges from another intriguing Jason contest here on the main table to today. The winner by five racks to four. And he'll be staying on to play Seo Seoa of Korea. Moscone Cup captains up next in the commentary box. Jeremy Jones and Alex Laley will be along to describe that for you in a few minutes' time. Paragon Pool Table. Diamond tables are designed and manufactured from the highest quality, sustainable hardwoods utilizing world-renowned designs. Diamond tables are unparalleled for playability and durability. After all, 
They are designed by players for players. Championship is being played with the new RMS tournament set. Featuring a unique molecular structure, it guarantees razor-sharp precision and unsurpassed longevity. Unquestionably the best pool balls in the world, this set is available in a TV and a value pack version, as well as in the new My RMF Ranger of Ball and Q cases. Now you can bring and play with the best ball set everywhere you go. My RMF, bringing new dimensions to your billiards experience. Of the Kazoo Champion of Champions! We're in Leicester in the Morningside Arena. Jason Shaw overcoming Chris Melling. Went all the way, hill hill. A scratch by Melling. Ball in hand on three balls for Jason Shaw. I'm here together with Jeremy Jones. Eight days of live pool in the Premier League pool. Ne next match coming up is Jason Shaw staying at the table. He'll be up against the lady champion Seo Seoya from Korea. SVB after that back-to-back -back matches against Wukun Lin and the young Arab player Khalid Al Gamdi. And then lastly, FSR, the world number one, the world champion up against Earl Strickland. Table two, order of play. Strickland at the moment playing against Nayuki Oi. Elden Ocean, the holder, will be up against Woodward. Woodward, back-to-back -back matches. After that against Yushchi Shin, and then last in this afternoon session, Peg Lion against Wu Kun Lin. So we're off to the races. Welcome in the booth, JJ. Difficult format, so let's talk a little bit about that round robin. Six days of play, 16 players, 50 matches. It's it's hard to get in the deep concentration, I feel. Yeah, I think the thing is, is what you just touched on, is don't try to overdo it. Uh, don't press early. you got to play a lot of pool. You know, all the games are worth something. Each match worth something. But uh, you could have some ups and downs with so many matches played. Thank you. First rack, so sad to break. Opening break for Sayoya. Comes fresh from her victory in the 
Alpha Diamond open in Vegas. Yeah, interesting. She broke head on there on the one ball. You won't see much of that this week. Pretty well. Yeah, it was a good hit, but this is not what you want to do in this breaking format. And you will get some action on the nine that way, and a real nice shot there to start. Natural path on the cue ball, hitting that gap between the three and seven. Jason, you got to put him as a favorite, but definitely a favorite. Getting to play a match already. Yeah, that's it. If you get to play back to back matches, they can really help you to start start out good on day one. And it's a long haul, you know, six days of round robin play, but still a good start will always help. So many Jason Shaw fans out there, and I'm certainly one of them. At you're watching, he's missing about a foot of cue stick <laughs> than what you're used to seeing. He's gone back to standard length cue. Did that a few months ago. Got away from it, went back to the long cue during the Moscone and a few events. Here early in 2023, playing with uh, what looks like a 58 inch cue. Yeah, he spent time with Stephen Feeney, that's the Mr. Side Right, famous in the snooker circuit. He flew in early, went to Sheffield, worked in Dingen Wee's Academy for three days with Feeney, and there was work on the snooker table. I'm sure Feeney has had some influence and in Eagle Eye taking that extension off. Run for the side here at the rails. It looks pretty natural. This is going to get awkward. Take a cut shot on the eight, most likely from the side pocket. He's standing in here. Nice. Hit that nice. When it's crunch time, I think nine out of ten players would play three rails would follow and then take the cut on the eight. This was a nice shot to play. And that may be a yeah, shot sure looking more towards the future of this event through the next eight days. Thank you. The drive break by Seo. And a run out for Jason Shaw. Look like Naoki Oi. One against Earl Strickland on table two. So difficult to keep your mindset right over the years we've seen players, you know, start out real well for three, four days and then running into a couple of losses and the other way around. Woodward last year, after a bad first opening couple of days, he I think he won like 11 matches straight. Yeah, and he's one of those players. There's more pool he gets to play. He's going to usually get better and better. And I could say most of the players here. Off with Alvin Ocean on table two. Ready with one win today. Right two. Jason Shaw to break. Jason Shaw there was Sitting one looking left. at the wreck. If it's dead in the middle, if it would maybe be tilted a little bit. Push out situation. In the push out, push out you do weigh in who you're up against. Is that your choice? Uh, I don't know if I would take this on. Terrible to come two rails off the bottom behind the four nine. That's terrible. Or maybe 
clip it towards the middle of the short rail. Needs to be real thin. She didn't sell out a shot. Nor is it very easy for Shaw to resave from here. Can't play what he'd normally like a secure cue ball. He's got to play just his talent here, cutting the two onto the five. Roman cue ball, a couple rails up above the eight. Extension. Extension, cool. Not the most friendly shot to shoot. like it I mean it worked for me that's really some a, a difference between top players and aspiring players top players will risk they will gamble they will let the balls loose where often uh, a lower level player decent player will try to do a standard shot you know not na not taking too much risk but playing really something that's not there players that's that, that is part of why they're the top players. Played that nice. And she can check it come straight down with the cue ball or come around the six but then it could be a little worry for the corner pocket low left it was funny she kind of shot in between I thought there I thought you'd either punch it and come really tight maybe in between the six eight like or run the ball and she kind of did shot in between I thought a little bit Maybe just catching it thick is what what made it look that way. Inside the table here. looking at Jason Shaw's backswing because now playing without the extension little less weight on the cue he'll need to do more with his cue action so maybe we're gonna see a little more backswing than we're used to probably of, of all the top players with the extension Shaw is one of the most compact players out there I agree with that Jason this Short is a lot wins of the power, round. though, even without the long cue. Thank you. Yeah, an excellent opportunity for Seo, her participation in this Premier League of pool. It's to play 50 matches. And I'm sure, I'm sure once she'll settle down a little bit more, come tomorrow or the day after, she'll take some scalps. And yeah, we have two ladies in the event. They're capable to win matches, that's for sure. Chu Che Yu is the reigning world nine ball champion from Chinese Taipei. Should be playing on the TV table tonight against Sanjin Peglivanovic from Bosnia. Rack three. Sarah Sarah to break. Trailing two racks to nil. Looks like a head on break again. Now, I'll say it, I don't think they did their homework right. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I actually saw that in the practice room. 
there for some some little piece. She was breaking from the side rail actually until she was informed by her partners or running mates. Break from the box. And we see her again in another match, maybe later today or even tomorrow. Break situation, watching all the other players. Take some time to, to get that cut break down, and you never really have it down, but you know, to get it in its best situation. Up. Now Shaw. Right side of it to make it up. To make top left. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and then play it slow. Yeah. Rail. Nice little try. Yeah, and when a ball is precluding, sometimes you tell yourself, "Let me get as much of it as as possible, or as thin as possible." Rather, in this case, probably kind of surprised himself he could catch it that thin. He can at least hit half ball. Three balls big. Unless he can hit it full enough. I like that. That's not I've been able to catch it full enough to really play the one up behind the three and the cue ball behind the four eight. Back to one a couple rails with the cue ball. Now open. Harder shot is this one. Don't overrun the angle. Get on the left side. That's good enough. Ball back a little bit. A lot of options from the three to the four. Get a little more out of it than that. Probably going to have an angle on the four. I think the table is slower than what they're expecting. Although Jason Shaw, having played Melling in a match before this, he, he should know. It appears the bed's a little slower than what I'm used to seeing. Which I actually like. I like watching that more than a very speedy cloth. I like, you know, I like to see the players work to the new the cue ball instead of being anxious to overhit it every time. And I think you see your be the best pool that way as well. Uh, the players, when they can let their stroke out a little bit, all pocketing becomes better. I think everything becomes better. Makers and people are fooled by the fast felt. Though he's been short a couple times. Recovery there. Jason Shaw wins the rack. He's storming Jason Shaw. 3 0 up against Seo. Her baptism of fire in a matchroom event.
Day one of the Premier League pool in Rackful. Leicester in the Morningside Arena. Jason, Jason Shaw is playing his second Getting match of the now. day. He beat Chris Melling before this with a scoreline of 5 4. <coughs> Isn't planning to have as close a finish against Seo. Seoya from Korea. 3 0 up and a dry break. Seo here to push or to jump. I would like to jump here, actually. I don't know her jumping skills. I'm not a champion jumper, but I would still prefer that over the push out. Push out, cool. Esther here, Jason, no, just your a choice. Bit more of it. I think she gets this back, though. Little jump shot, it appears, anyways. Would you give it back? I think I would, yeah. Yeah? You don't jump? No, I do a little bit. I mean, I'm actually better at it now than I used to be you know, just because of all the great jumpers of today. Extension cool. Well, what would be your reason to give it back? Just you don't fancy it. Yeah, I don't fancy it too much position. I think you've got to get into the cue ball quite a bit to get positioned. A lot of times, sometimes you got to make a ball to play safe, and it's still the right thing to do. Players these days are not too good. Helping so the ball, it seems like you're a hair of an underdog, or at least most of the field would be. Always that, that part of it as well. You can a little bit of a yeah. ball on a miss. That. I mean, you you, all, you you need to weigh that in. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I've played competitive snooker a little bit, and I had to adjust my shot selection. So in snooker, you have an end game. Let's say you have three colors on the table, or just a black. Start. And I had situations where I would play safe in pool. But in, in snooker, I Ball learned to attack more because start the, clock. the chances of leaving a shot. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's a six by twelve table, so. Right, right, it's right. Yeah, we used to have a six by twelve, and I didn't play much of it, but occasionally, back at the pool room in Houston, it'd be the same kind of thing. Figure your percentages of leaving a shot are much, much slimmer. If you do, they have to make a great shot on the six by twelve. Now let's see his speed here. Just needs to get to where he is now or slightly further. That's the beauty of the little slower bed, though. You can let your stroke out on that kind of shot, let the tip position kind of kill the ball a little bit more rather than being so worried about the speed. Yeah, I like a little slower cloth and tight pockets. I mean, tight pockets on the TV table, so they sure, would sure. never be overly tight. Just need to hit them clean. Now, besides several months ago, when I saw him switch for an event or two, was it uh, kind of, you could say, his maiden event here? Standard League Q State. Pound this in. Playing snooker for three days. T 
two rails. Ed to me has seemed a little slower on the stun shots. It seemed to release quite as much. To get to the hill, a nine along the rail. Looks like he's spinning it. No. Center ball. Jason Shaw wins the round. Four zero. Shaw is up the second match of the day, and by the way, he'll play a third one. It's in the evening session on table one on the TV table against SVB. SVB is playing the next match also in this session against Wu Kun Lin, the bronze medalist of the recently played World Nine Ball Championships, and after that against Khalid Al Gamdi. And I don't know why, Jeremy, but when I saw the um, list of invites for the PLP for this tournament, 16 players, uh, SVB, Woodward, and Earl, I I had a good feeling. I thought, I, I, I don't know why, but I thought you guys might do well this tournament. Well, Schuyler had a nice run last year. and Like I said earlier, more fool he plays throughout the week is just going to benefit him tremendously. Or Shane, I think, is still in great form. One heck of a match for him to get knocked out of that World Nine Ball Championship. So incredible pool he played all week. Played pretty well in Vegas. Is rack also. five. Sarah said to break. Change Twenty-four racks to take nil. Much, whether it be an mis extra mistake or just a little bit of a roll, one way or another, to get knocked out of events. Nine ball action on the break, but
Premier League pool in the Morningside Arena in Leicester. Eight days live pool, 16 players. And after six days, the field will be limited to 10. We saw Jason Shaw winning 5-0 over Seo Seoya from Korea. And now on the TV table here on the right, SVB against Wu Kun Lin from Chinese Taipei. Wu Kun Lin had a great run at the recently held World Championships in Kielce, Poland. Got to the semi-final as he did in 2017. Hey, and that's us, Jeremy Jones. How you doing? <laughs> F flying in from Vegas, representing your sponsor there. I had a couple of nice days in Florida with my son. Good stuff. And now over in Leicester. It's your first time commenting on the Premier League pool. Yeah, first time there. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be different. It's going to be different with uh, the format round robins races to five that's a whole different psychology so all 16 players playing 15 matches in the first five days and then the bottom six will be eliminated after day five then we start over again doing the whole same thing 10 players facing each other for two days and then on day eight there will be the knockout day Six players remaining, playing for a place in the semifinals. And then it's uh, sudden death from there. So a, a lot of pool to be played with your top prize. 20 grand for the winner. And all the way down to 16th. That, that's basically your expenses paid for. But every match counts here in the Morningside Arena. A uh, hard-fought tournament. And it, it, it's funny in a way because it, it's round robin. Everyone is pretty chill around here. But still, every match counts. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, players these days with the schedule they run, you know, it's easy to be a little laxed, you know, the first day of any event, I think. Yeah guys going so much uh, from all over the world it seems like uh, but they're gonna get pretty serious pretty quick here and even though there's a ton of matches killer instinct will set in for these these players and uh, like you said everything means something here at BLP yeah the thing is it just takes it's too long to be 100% focused non-stop but we're switching to table two as we're waiting to solve some technical issues on table one. Albin Ocean here, the holder against Woodward. Woodward playing his first match. He'll be playing back-to-back -back matches after this against Polish Konrad Juszczyszyn. How about that for a safety? Beautiful. Yeah, it's pretty much the same shot he attempted. Opener here in game number seven at three apiece. But a little better on this this attempt. Very difficult hit hit here. He may have to go two rails to the top rail where he's standing, left side rail going right by the eight. I don't really see another. Yeah, I think that's what he's looking at now. Extension called. Got to hit down on it with center ball. I don't really see much of anything else. It looks like we're getting ready to get started on table one. Yeah. Oh. I'm dying. <laughs> I was dying to see that kick shot, though, by Skyler. And we'll get to see it, of course. He's going to go that route we we're talking about. Okay, then wins the leg. <laughs> okay, you folks back home. Skyler did play the uh, short, long rail route and did manage to hit the two ball. Wukun Lin That's gets right. to break first. Wukun Lin to break. Yeah, and the last time we saw him in such a matchroom arena event, semifinal against Sufi, and well, he didn't play his, his best game. He had an incredible tournament. What a story Sufi, Sufi was and still is, actually. World Nine Bowl Championship and then a Euro Tour win right after. Yeah, beating FSR in the final. Yeah, Sufi, he will be back. He's invited for, well, he's played himself into 
the world pool masters it's not like he had an invite because it's a nice story i mean he just gained enough points he's in through the rankings very interested to see how his game will evolve. He's very raw, Sufi is, you know, and uh, interested Special to see goal. his ability to get that fine balance between a little more savvy at the table, but at the same time, fearless. Yeah, keep the energy, I think. Shane, your choice. Shane doesn't even get out from the chair. Please reset the shot clock for 30 seconds. This shot on the jump definitely offers a little bit of a reward, it looks like. I think he can move the cue ball to get on the three if he pockets the two. For all this, though, stunned forward. A lot of elevation. Look at that. Wow. Wow, what a jump. Beautiful. Yeah, and I'm kind of curious that he was obviously willing to take on the jump. I wonder why he rolled out, period, really. I thought it was a little easier jump from where it was at. Maybe wanting to make the jump more difficult, just in case Shane did take it. Extension called. This is where killing the ball becomes difficult. Throw this in with outside English, touchy shot. Could run one rail towards the nine as an opportunity as well to hold the cue ball. Take it with some outside English. Nice. Hit that ball very good. Went clean in the heart of the pocket. Always addressing the cue ball low, and then if he needs to hit center ball or higher, he'll sort of drop his back arm, coming in higher on the cue ball. Watching him warm up, which I've watched him play before. Very left eye dominant player. A little different. A lot of the Chinese Taipei players are, are taught to put the cue stick in the middle of the chin. Excuse me, maybe left eye dominant, but train the eyes to get used to the cue during the, during the chin. It's always interesting to me. I didn't know that actually. Of course, they start at a very young age for the most part, so it makes that you know, kind of system easier. Boy, getting straight here. Hmm. Yeah, we said it before. Table is on the slow side. But far from a slow start for Wu Kunlin. Won the leg, pushed out, got it back, jumped the first ball in. And then cruised to a 1-0 lead if this nine goes down. There it is. Started with that beautiful jump. A really nice three ball right afterwards. Got himself in a great position and then cleared the table. Or three on Sky Woodward. Third with Sky to break in the game, in game number eight. Go SVB to break. A very seasoned campaigner, Bukun Lin. A regular high finisher.
He has the game to go all the way. Rack two. Shane Van Boning to break. Trailing one rack to nil. This is close to being a carom. Yeah, I'd have to hit it with some speed, but it definitely, I think, is a playable shot. Got to come across the one. Maybe with a flick of left English, too. I don't know. So the carom is on, but as Jeremy said, he would need a lot of speed on the cue ball. It's, it's wild. It's a wild shot to attack. Gonna attack it though. Well, or what he looked at is banking the one off of the nine back down table. I think he feels like he's gonna get the one back anyways, playing the kiss shot. It may end up kissing the cue ball when the cue ball comes off the nine. We'll see. That's what he was trying, but caught it way thick. Now it's left a one nine. And a route, an angle for the cue ball to go down table. So does he go all in or include the defense here? Extension code. Yeah, good shot. Shape and burning wins the rack. Good shot by SVB. Yeah, I would like to see that 1-9 position again that Wu Kun Lin played. Because in hindsight, I realized there was more space between the 1 and 9 than I figured beforehand. Break format. Yeah, it couldn't be any other way, really. Yeah, if you're absolutely. playing races to five. Yeah, so Back many three. matches. Who can then to break? Scores are tied, one rack each. Coming around that nine ball with the cue ball. Yeah, he's going to love the starter on the two. He's got an open center of the table. So draw two rails off the two ball. Pretty easy position on the three. Now hit low left. You can hit it a little fat on purpose. Use a little bit more pocket. Needs an angle. Would like to have an angle on the four. Got enough to cheat it to get to the long rail. Maybe. Can he enough to play from underneath the four to the side maybe he's looking at the four five combo i think but that's, that's pretty off angle An extension cold An extension cold an extra 30 seconds for wu kun lin he was looking at that line to the side pocket on the left on an older cloth it's easy to Blast it, play stun run through with the right spin. Here, not so much, but he did well. He did too good, actually.
And all these players, of course, know that they do have a little time to make up some ground in this format. But they want to get to playing their best pool as quick as possible. Combination. So full, he didn't get the four safe. Ricocheting off the nine. Bit of a mistake there. Corner pocket is not on, I feel. Gonna roll this otherwise. Extension cord. To the side pocket. If he plays the side pocket for the four with a high ball, that nine ball comes into play. Foul. It's always a difficult way to play it, I thought, with speed. How do you in roll hand. that maybe? Please start the clock. Yeah, so the way that he missed the shot, that he fumbled the ball there, tells me or gives me the impression at least that he wasn't decided on how to play it exactly. If a player of Shane's caliber, if, if I cannot really see what the intention was, then I feel he sort of disintegrated on the shot. Got just the perfect bounce there, not making the six too difficult, but easier position on the seven. Off the rail. Looking good, Bukun Lin. Run the cue ball for the side, but play for the corner, I believe. He hits the balls crisp. Reminds me a little bit of uh, Sha Ching Wu when he does his warm up strokes with the so low on the, the cue ball. For some reason, I feel it's a thing you see lefties do a lot when they do their warm up strokes that they're low on the cue ball. Take a quick break. I'll be back for rec four. Welcome back to the Morningside Arena where Shane Van Boning is Shane breaking. Van Boning to break. 
Races to five. To one. one big group of 60 players made it to Leicester. And over the first five days, they'll each play 50 managed to matches to see who's in the top 10. And the bottom six players will be eliminated. Yeah, I watched Shane practice and rarely made the one in the side breaking, which is pretty odd for him. There again, a dry break to open. Made, made two on the break here, but no shot on the one. Oh, roll Push out cold. Playing all the way to the left rail, I feel. Ooh. He made that look easier than it actually was. Like the, the, the speed on this oh, roll the shot. Push out, yeah. yeah. He sort of two stroked it. Control passed. Please reset. Or hit it. Those. Really made the kick on the one much more difficult. Spin into it. I don't know if that really offers much. Trying to rip at the three here. Really nice. Yeah, acknowledged by Wukun Lin. He's looking at the kick. Mm. Going to take on the long rail bank here. You certainly don't want to open up the eight and nine in any kind of manner. If he plays the bank, he Extension has a cool. second chance to make that three on the way back. Good effort. Really nicely struck, holding the cue ball, and he's going to get a little reward, it looks like. Bit covered up. Yeah. All right. First four shots from here are easy. It's all about figuring out what to do on the eight ball. Trying to look and see really where the seven's at. If you could play the seven on the top side pocket if you're looking at your screen, that's a nice way to go into the eight nine with a little angle. You wouldn't want to do it in the lower side pocket on your screen. It's possible from that angle, but better from the other side. So if you could come across here, That you can do it from either side pocket, but the one that the other side is a little friendlier. You got to go off of a full, pretty foolish hit off the seven, right? Playing yeah. For the other side, right? If he goes, if he stays on the left side, he has less margin. So this is where you could get a little kind of like double kiss on the nine if you're going into the nine ball. I wouldn't play it too nicely. I wouldn't try finesse position. No. Over? Okay. Go a little bit. But no, this is tough. Nice Extension arc cool. on that cue ball. When he fired in the seven. A lot of power. Shot that Shane practices quite often. Shot. Never hit the side. Very clean. Back four started with a nice kick shot off of a pass push out. Shane wins the rack. Yeah, good rack. You said it, Double J. He practices that shot a lot. Whenever I see Shane practice, he's just firing in big shots. Yeah, yeah, he definitely. Uh, like this shot on the eight would be one of the more finesse shots that he would practice. Right, right. The rest would be harder or more spin. Yeah, he likes to practice the elevated shots off the in rail lot, top inside, stunning the ball, drawing the ball. 
Bain, he wants the balls to lay tough. That's what he likes about it. That's how he likes it. And I think uh, with the new rules, it uh, sets up well for him. On table two, Konrad Juszczyszyn from Poland is now playing Woodward. Woodward lost his opening match against the Elban Ocean. And are trailing one to zero. Today, the opening day in Leicester. A lot of pool to be played. Five days, 50 matches for each, each player, and then the, the ten best we can in the standings will advance. Scores tied, two racks each. Position. Yeah, Wu has made one in the side of each of his first three breaks. Push out on one where he made a beautiful jump shot. Most part, you got to give the breaking edge so far to him. Not easy to get from the three to the four. It's difficult to get on the lower side of the line on the three. Got to play a little bit of a gambling angle to, you know, it'll play the three with a little speed where he goes by the nine in between the four, six, a couple rails up. Or excuse me, between the five, six, a couple rails up for the, for the four. Oh, yeah, from this angle, that seems to be the shot. Extension You're very cool. good at reading the angles. Yeah. I feel because from the other angle, I thought draw yeah. and go into the nine and then yeah. make it zip back the cue ball, but that's not on actually. Yeah, I think he can get just a little past center table somewhere around there. Gonna have to hit this one pretty hard to get by the nine. A little bounce effect off the three. Looking at coming two rails long between the five, six, and then back between the six, eight. Tip up a little bit. High ball. A funny kiss off the floor. Shot. Well, I still from here. I, I still think he did well. Yeah, yeah. He had to take a little chance there. And that cue ball gets funky when you go into the rail with speed and topspin. We yeah. saw it arc a little bit. And that's always off a thicker hit that it, it's the. Uh, it can act a little unpredictable. Nice. Safe. So watch the safe. speed. It's going to hurt. Oi, oi, oi. We heard the referee say five seconds. Type of shot, easy to two rail and come above this just a hair and miss the entire ball. Learn to not add spin to these at all. Oh, yeah. With that angle, spin is too aggressive. And he got away with it. Yeah. And that's it. Anytime you hit the ball, you have a chance to get lucky. I feel in general, especially on a lower level, players try to do some YouTube stuff on every kick shot. Sometimes you just need to make Extension sure to cool. hit it. Difficult curve, this. Long ways away from the ball, he's curving around, which always makes it more difficult. Mm. That tells you how tight the pockets play. Hit it well. Needs to focus on this one. You can't take it for granted. Your position. And 
this is because he hit it 4% too thick. Yeah. It's, it's very marginal. Yeah, sometimes you can over hit that and have the cue ball kind of act the same. But there, I, I agree with you. I think the speed of the swing was pretty good. Just catching the five a little thick. Recovery there. Yeah, good shot. Anytime it holds its line so straight coming across, you know, you hit it pretty pure. It raising up just a little. So it's gonna be a yeah, so if he if he addresses one tip below center, it's going to be topspin. And it seems like he starts it even lower and then comes up just a little bit with each pre stroke into that little bit below center like you were talking about, Alex. How about the nine? A little bit? No. Yeah. Good wreck by Wu Kun Lin. All top players here in the PLP in Leicester, but some wins the um, look a little fresher and a little more fit than others. Wu Kun Lin is one of them. Yeah, I'd have to tell you, look at it just for a second, but I would think 14 or 15 of these players came from Vegas. Yeah, that's no joke. Nine, no, uh, eight hour time difference, right? That's right. Yeah. Khalid, I think, wasn't in Vegas. It's the only one I can remember right offhand. I'm sure we'll see him play Shane later on, maybe. Yeah, he plays Shane in the match after this. Uh, Khalid Al Gandhi, he was actually the winner of the inaugural uh, SVB Junior Championship. I can't recall the exact title of the tournament. Uh, SVB Junior Open. Junior Open, yeah. yes. Okay. It was held at the U.S. Open. Uh, alongside that, and Khalid, of course, played in the U.S. Open as well, I believe. And talking about the uh, SVB Junior Open, we'll have a Jason Shaw Junior Open also, and the uh, entries will open at 2 p.m. on Rack Tuesday, six. the 7th. Shane Van Boning to break. Trading three racks to two. And Jason Shaw will be participating in a Balkan Tour event, 17th till 19th of March. Moscone Cup tickets will go on sale on the 24th of April. And the Shane World Tour Masters tickets and UK Open tickets are on sale yeah. as we speak. A golden break here from SVB. And uh, has anyone had more golden breaks since the break rule was changed than SVB? Like yeah. I don't think anyone's even close. Uh, yeah. Did make the one in the side. You <laughs> saw Woodward in the back checking out SVB's golden break. No, we started as a race to five, now a race to two. Every match counts. Well, basically, if you're playing 50 matches, what I would tell myself, you Rack know, ju seven. just do your thing. Try, we'll come but it's the, um, Scores are tight. if you play decent or good and you lose the match, that's okay. But it's about the unforced errors. Like a missed eight ball where you can go up 4-2 and then ending up losing the match. Those are the ones that will haunt you. But easier said than done, because if you're playing decent, but you lose two, three matches, it'll be hard to uh, keep a positive frame of mind. One ball in the side again for Bu Kun Lin. And he got a little action on the nine. He's got a great shot on the two, but the three, four pretty tied up. Not a lot of angle going forward to get 
know, produce something on the three, maybe a cross corner bank of some sort. Can't draw back to get something offensive. Well, I like, and, and if he would just make the two stay on that side of the table and overcut the three as a safety. Swing the cue ball round back up table. Is he looking Extension at the two call. in the corner to try and open the three, four, I think? Tying up anyways. Well, hats off to him if he plays that. One good thing, it looks pretty natural with the draw stroke, and he doesn't have to kill it. Just needs a little bump on the three or the, or the four. Nice try. About the two a hair thick to the pocket, so that tells you maybe that a little stretch to open up the three four. There's a catch in the top of the three. Nice. Roll there in the full snooker. Was it easy to control the three ball? And he had to stun off that ball. Yeah, That's exactly. why controlling the yeah. three was tough. Just rolling the ball, controlling the three is kind of expected, and player should, you know, come away with it. But he made that look a little easier than it really extension was. Extension cool. The jump cue there. I don't think the pocket's available with the eight. There, interesting jump shot to me. Wow. Yeah, that was his intention, holding the cue ball down table, ball and letting, letting the ball run into the eight. Yeah, I didn't mind the kick myself, but just because there was a lot of traffic down here, a lot of good things could happen, and Shane does kick at the ball really well. Just keep controlling the cue ball, and he should get himself to the hill first. Couldn't have minded a little angle here to play the five on the opposite side. No, he's got to draw the cue ball back. Well, he's, he's not drawing, it seems. That way. Yeah, and he was addressing the cue ball just one tip below center, so right. I knew he was going forward. <laughs> well, I wonder why he wouldn't, if he had that angle, why he didn't just draw up and play the five on the opposite side with such a clear open side of the table where the seven's at. That's interesting to me. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he put himself in a funny spot. Unless you play to the corner. A little awkward. Draw this back. I don't know if he can play for the side. May draw this back to the you know, where he's standing. Come back out. Could just pinch it out, I guess. Yeah, take a longer eight ball. Hmm. So he did draw, but not convincingly. Yeah, kind of in between there, I thought. I mean, if you're going to come backwards, normally you'd go ahead and try and get premium. Yeah, position yeah, there, right? rip it. Yeah. Shot. Oh, nice. With a lot of confidence and some big shots. Yeah, good wreck by Mukunlin. He played a good, a courageous two ball, opening up the three and four, not getting shaped. Then he played a nice, touchy safety on the three ball. And SVB a little unlucky with the scratch. And then with ball in hand, Wukunlin didn't exactly cruise to victory in that wreck. Still had to come with shots. On the hill now and... SVB to break. And we're going to have a lot of 5-4 matches, a lot of Hill Hill matches go along this event. 
Of course, as the days go, you feel like they're more important, but uh, all these are important just from the start of this event. So. One at a time. By today's Monday, by Wednesday, players will start to count. Unless they have a real bad start, like if someone right, is, right. is is losing three yeah, out of four right. on the first two days, then they'll start calculating, I guess. And even then, it's still early. Right. If you if you played four out of fifteen matches. Yeah. One in the side, first time, for SVB. Playable pocket here. Upper corner. Easy there. Safety's not real easy either with the cue ball near the rail. He clipped the two and try and go one rail behind the, the five. Looks like he's taking all the shot to me. Nice, beautiful. Very good shot. Still work to do with that seven being so close to the nine. I don't think it goes. Yeah, that would be ideal. A good angle on the six for the six eight combination and then bumping that seven into an open position with the guaranteed shape on the six. Wants to get to where he can hit this light, though, if he's going to do that. He's going to maybe open off the six or play underneath position on the seven. Just to lay on the rail anywhere. But yeah, get nice. The six open. He's so good at these types of shots. Close to the rail, the six. Draw. Shot. Now this l has looked pretty straightforward, but his control on the six and then how he opened the seven nine is really he's really consistent doing that. Even on top level, one out of eight times a player would fail to get the required position. So if I wins the rack. SVB hardly ever. Now, good fight. SVB keeping himself in the match. A good break and a beautiful run out. Started out with that difficult two ball. And now all the pressure shifting back to Vukun Lin. Yeah, and so many matches these players have to play. What do you. Without the crowd here, right? You gotta, you gotta remind yourself to stay focused, right? Create your own energy, you might say. Yeah. Good point. Deciding rap. Who can then to break? So last rack, Vukun Lin is playing another match in this afternoon session on table two against Alex Peggy Lyon. To all the focus now to this one. One rack getting the first match point on the board. Look at that. Look at that. But the four ball comes in. Wow. Yeah, he's been really consistent with the one so far, making it, I think, each of the breaks and just inches away from the two before the four decided to get involved. He's got some cover. Hell, but. I don't think he can roll out too far over there now. I'll, I'll have a look at it here in a moment, but. 
That area is okay, but if he rolls out too far, is there some type of kiss shot on the four in the side? Off the two? Push out cold. It's an awkward shot that you wouldn't shoot very often, but if he goes past center table here, you uh, see that four ball? Oh, yeah, right? uh, yeah, Carib. Yeah, yeah kiss shot, yeah. Carib on it. That's why he had to make sure he didn't go past center table Shane, and no don't choice. give up the bottom of the ball. Nice. Tricky. He can Control slice the two and make the cue will come back. What else? Yeah, sometimes you just have to try and get the one ball snooker here, maybe with using the nine. I don't know. Coming oh. back towards the seven with the cue ball? Or, or, or the cue ball towards the five, if the if two ball wouldn't be too speedy. Oh, well, that's not too bad. Problem is, you know, when you have the six, eight and all that, if you let them see any of it, you have real problems as far as uh, uh, the safety and return for Shane. But hey, Blue's got to love that. Yeah. Super Su nice hit. Super nice hit. And also, he was aware that the scratch was looming large. Right. But, you know, a tricky position, tricky push out. You need to take that risk. Really nice uh, hit on the two ball containing that, not opening up a shot. Extension the snooker on top of it. But still, this jump with the eight and six behind the two ball, anything can happen here. Anything. Wow. Unread Jushishin is going to Skylar Woodward. Oh, yeah, we haven't talked about potential dark horses in this PLP. I was coming, you know, or waking up this morning thinking who it could be. Jushishin. I'll tell you, I've, I've seen him the last six or eight, ten months being as good a form as extension I've ever seen cool. him be in as well. So. Yes, extension cool. One of my dark horses in Poland to make a deep run for the Polish contingent didn't work out, but why is he looking at two some kind of way? Seven? I thought it'd be in, cross corner bank here. Into the rail. But he's far away. Really going for a tough shot there. Didn't hit it terribly. No, that was hard. I think I would have liked the kiss shot a little more, like the two into the rail, into the seven. But it was all tough with that distance. It was a good jump also by Shane. Yeah. Yeah, very good. I think that was definitely what he was intending, trying to separate the two. And uh, a little funny getting on the four. We'll see. Cross-corner bank on the two. Smart. Look, gain the angle to get over a little better for the five, I think. Two. Taking a little bit of extra time, just making sure he has won this match, but still needs to win it. You know, high quality from both players here. I like the way they're starting the PLP. Shane has done really well to win this match. Been trailing. Vukun Lin has played good. Keep it in the pocket there. Power to move the cue ball off that side rail towards the eight. Looks like just a full stroke here to finish. Yeah, nice. Did enough. And so, so, mind you, what he did there, this was not a straight draw stroke, was like stun draw. You don't want full acceleration on the cue ball on this TV table. 
Good match by Shane. Shane. Wins the match. Very Five good match. Solid stuff by both players. And SVB overcoming the Chinese Taipei challenger. 5-4 for Shane. And the good news for SVB is that he can stay in his chair because he's playing Khalid Algamdi from Saudi Arabia. The 17-year-old champion in the ma match coming up here on table one. table diamond tables are designed and manufactured from the highest quality sustainable hardwoods utilizing world-renowned designs diamond tables are unparalleled for playability and durability after all they are designed by players for players Championship is being played with the new RMS tournament set. Featuring a unique molecular structure, it guarantees razor sharp precision and unsurpassed longevity. Unquestionably the best pool balls in the world, this set is available in a TV and a value pack version, as well as in the new My RMF Ranger of Ball and Q cases. Now you can bring and play with the best ball set everywhere you go. My RMF, bringing new dimensions to your billiards experience. Of the Kazoo Champion of Champions!
Well, it wasn't comfortable by any means, but Shane Van Boning, the former world champion, did get there in the end, having the better of the closing exchanges. And yet another close finish on the main table to beat Wu Kun Lin by five racks to four and get his Premier League campaign off to a positive start. Very early stages, but as you can see, it's been a good day for Conrad Yasushin, Jason Shaw and Alban Ocean, who've already got two wins apiece. As we've said, you need probably six, maybe seven to get through to the next phase. Winning starts also for Pagalion, Oi and Van Boning, but they've all played just one match. Strickland and Woodward, two Americans, both played two and lost two. Remember the top ten will go through to the next phase over the weekend. And such is the nature of this unique format that Shane Van Bonin is straight back into it. This time up against Khalid Al Gamdi, the young man from Saudi Arabia, who has been making such a name for himself over the last year or so. Yeah, Khalid won the SVB Junior Open, and it was Shane who Shane Van Bonin handed wins Khalid the trophy. So this is a nice little matchup for the young man, 17 years First of match, age. What Shane Van a week he's got in store even if he goes on to have a complete nightmare just the fact that he's out on the nine by four table playing all the top players in the world good experience the nine's close yeah it's win-win from as you say because even if he was to go out there and okay maybe not if he lost every single match but even if he only won a couple of his 15 matches then just being out there and climatizing himself playing in these wonderful conditions it's just absolutely priceless. The way we're talking about him there, it sounds as though we're expecting him to struggle, and he may very well not. Wasn't great for him earlier today against Alex Pagalai, and he was finding the going hard, but really a long way to go in this first phase. So plenty of time to play his way in. He may not get much opportunity to do so in this opening rack. Certain players seem to get that run of the ball when things are going well for him you know Shane's obviously yeah he's not the world champ now but he finally won that title that has eluded him you know he's one of the best players in the world and the opening shot there he got a kind nudge on the three and it just seems to be that way the brown seven looks to be in an awkward spot as well so we'll keep an eye on that Wukun Lin, incidentally, is also straight back into action over on the other table against Alex Pagalion. Yeah, Pagalion, one of the uh, the elder players here this week, but he's been having a recent run of run of form, rather. Yeah, he's not winning the tournaments, but he's been going deep. So he beat Filler. And the World Nine Ball Championships. He beat him twice there, so he's beaten him three times in total in the last few weeks. Yeah, it is a great mix, and it's really exemplified by this match. You've got Van Boning, who's so experienced. You've got a complete newcomer, really, in you know, Al and how many players from the older generation? Strickland, obviously, among them. It's a wonderful mix of nationalities and experience levels. Without his young opponent getting to the table. So Van Boning is going to be swiftly into a 1-0 lead. Clears the table a lot, does Shane? I know that sounds obvious, but what I mean by that is whenever he's got a shot at the lowest ball, you know, he's a very, very high percentage yeah, player where he always clears the table. That that rack was a little dicey, but he still managed to do it as he takes the opener. The tournaments were played in a different order last year. World Championship was played in early April in Milton Keynes. So this had already taken place, this event. And I think the Premier League last year, although he didn't win it, laid a lot of the foundations for Van Boning winning the World Championship. Particularly, we saw he was trying new things with the break and towards the end of that week, breaking very effectively, which proved to be the bedrock of his world title success five or six weeks later. Yeah, I remember when this break rule was implemented, Shane, who is regarded as one of the best breakers on the nine-ball world tour, he was struggling with this break, but 
boy, what a difference. He crunches this break like no other. There's Khalid's effort. Looked a little weak, a little thin. That looks a nasty leave. Gamdi ranked number 92 in the world, but even at that, it's an improvement of 19 places since the start of 2023, and over the years to come, we'll see that number drop further and further from 92. With all the potential to be in the very low numbers and high in the rankings. He's been playing since 2015, but didn't take long to show his potential. Hard to believe he's just 17 years of age. I'm sure he looks up to Shane as well, so this is a, a good match for him. He wasn't trying to pop the seven, I don't think that was there. He was just trying to get some distance. Containing safety shot. Of age, as you were a moment ago, Carl. This is the year when Shane Van Boning turns 40. It's incredible to think he's still only that age. You know, look at how long he's been around as a top player. Yeah, Shane himself has been playing the game from a very young age. He was always meant to be a pool player. That was his destiny. Ball looks to be going near the eight ball here, and he has. Didn't need to get too cute with the cue ball there. Anywhere on the right side of the table, he could have sent the two into the two balls over to the top left. So it's a mistake. Now he, he will hit this two ball. Good things can happen. He's got to watch the scratch as well. Scratch in the side pocket. This is not going to be good news. SVB with a chance in rack two coming up. Didn't want the two in. He did not want the two to fall. You could see where he was putting the cue ball. Watch the two just roll through. Boy, he's going to have to come with something good here. And that's if you can see the potting angle. Extension code. The eight ball, he must have hit that thin because it didn't really move that much, the eight. Especially for the Start power he was playing. Bit of a gift now, isn't it, to Al Gamdi? Look to settle in his opening match against Pagalion. Obviously, this is a whole other level. He's playing on the main table, for one thing, and also the fact that he's up against Shane Van Boning. World champion as recently as last year. Current world number two. Good to play himself into the tournament in this match. First of all, He's got to play his way into the match itself. And this is a great chance for him to do that. Khalid was um, after the SVB Junior Open last year, Michael. He had to get a flight out of there because he was going back home playing in a pool tournament. Just with local players. And the winner got over 250,000 US dollars to the winner. And he said if he, if he won the event, he was going to buy himself a Lamborghini. Big desires early on. Yeah, that was the uh, SVP Junior Open, which was played during the US Open in Atlantic City back in October. And he did win it, as you say, beat Trenton White in the final. Sat them down no end. He was looking nervous early on in the match, but he took that as efficiently as he could have hoped to do. 
And so that's one all. One nil on the other table in favour of Alex Pagaline against Wu Kun Lin. We can have a look at that now. We've said Pagaline beat Joshua Filler. Yeah, World Championship, and then faced him again with the double elimination format later in the tournament. And the feeling was, well, Filler's not going to get caught out a second time, but he was. Beaten him in the States just a few weeks earlier as well. It's been a good start to 23 for Pagaline. Great to see him here. A world champion. The third rack, Shane Van Bonning to break. One rack each. One all back here. Made a random ball, obviously trying to play the one. We know that by now, but just the yeah. the power that he possesses is what is going to help him maybe pop more random balls than other players. A lot of the time, when we see the other players breaking, they may put the one in the side and it's just that one ball, but with Shane, his philosophy is to try and get rid of more balls so there's less work to do. Must be a little bit careful. He's probably thinking of his previous shot in the last rack where the two followed the three. Yeah, so he's playing it a lot slower. semi-finals of this event last year just before winning that world championship also a semi-finalist at the UK Open part of the USA team which got to the semis of the World Cup of pool beaten by Singapore went one better at the European Open made it to the final but lost in a close finish to Alban Ocean who he had beaten in that world final just a few months earlier very disappointing US Open though his latest attempt to that record sixth title went out in the last 64. Alex Kazakis, and he's missed a couple of balls early on in this match, Carl. Yeah, whenever you're firing the ball up past the side, it can be missed. Is Algamdi maybe has a chance here to lead? You're so conscious that the four doesn't hit that far middle point. Sometimes when you're behind it, it's hard to believe it can do that, but it does so. He overcompensate and miss it the other way. But as you said, Michael, good chance here for the young man. That is not going to help his case. Usually very reliable on the queue. Maybe a little bit nervy because he seemed to hit that ball very hard. I think not a body language expert by any means, but you don't need to be to see that he's feeling nerves out there. Where he was, as you say, presented with the trophy as winner of the SVB Junior Open. Now he's playing the man himself. Pace gives a lot away. Boning let his young opponent off the hook once in this rack. Let back in. Seemed likely he'd do it again. Gamdi has paid for his laps. Had the chance to lead for the first time against one of the greatest we've ever seen, but instead he trails once yeah, more. It's now 2 work. 1 to Van Boning.
Khalid Al Gamdi got an unexpected chance to take the third rack and lead for the first time against Shane Van Boning. But he passed it straight back to his illustrious American opponent, who capitalized to the full for a 2 1 lead. Now it's Al Gamdi breaking in rack four. It was a pretty sporty effort, though. Four balls on the break. It's funny, the more balls you put, you would think it would be easier, but so often you see a tricky shot that you face with, and Khalid is faced with one here because, yeah, the two pots, actually. It's not easy, but you can run this ball through, make something happen with the nine and the red three ball, break them up. a good sign Michael miss that by a long way and yeah you can miss them but when you're behind the shot and you cue it badly that's in your headspace you think uh oh not queuing too clever today what I did see of his match against Pagalion earlier there were a few cases of that where he was missing balls from that sort of range by some distance Shane was just trying to pop that ball and get the cue ball up in an area where he could play the hook snooker. Extension card. This is awkward. It looks like it's over the pocket, but it's not. It's on the bottom rail. So in order to pop this, you have to play it quite thin. Cue ball's near the rail, so you can't really play it with loads of side. That's why he's jacking up, striking down. This is throw it with danger. Well, it's a good pot, but as you can see, the cue ball is not going to be his friend. Surprising to see him looking this nervous because he's well accustomed to playing good players and beating them, in fact. Beat Skylar Woodward and Oliver Shonoki the European Open last year. Settled it all in his head. Don't blame Khalid for trying to make something happen on the nine ball, but looks like it's going to cost him this rack. made his mistakes, had his lapses in this match. Nevertheless, Shane Van Boning so goes too clear for the first time at 3-1. Four balls down off the break for Ogamdi. Didn't do him a great deal of good in the end. It's like a line flying on the other table. A couple of balls away from a 4-0 lead over Wu Kun Lin. The ball that takes him to the hill. This is the big test, isn't it, Carl? I mean, we know about Al Gamdi and his talent, but it's one thing being a very talented and able pool player, it's quite another knowing how to go out there and produce it and win matches against top players. And as we said, he did have a couple of good wins at the European Open, but he's well aware he's on main right, table five. here, and that's Shame a different psychology. Leading three rugs to one. 
winning breeds confidence it's as simple as that you know the man who's going to be playing on the on the, our next match coming up after this one we're watching is obviously arguably the best player in the world right now so he's going to be brimming with confidence and if you keep losing pool matches you might think you've got a lot of pool left to play but it does become harder yeah that's francisco sanchez ruiz referring to there crowned world champion he'll be making his bow in this tournament against Earl Strickland Dry break gives Al Gamdi another opportunity but an awkward start to say the least of it this little gap might help this little gap has helped At this level, the balls just have to disappear. There's no ifs, buts, or maybes. You have to clear the table when you're playing the likes of Shane. If you're not clearing the table here, well, you're never going to win. You're never even going to put up a good battle. The balls are all sat kind. You know, it's, this is just literally just make sure you keep the cue ball nice. Don't do anything silly. It's easier said than done. I know. Just as I said that, that one wobbled and went in. So he's definitely not quite feeling it. A few of the players have flown in from Vegas as well. There's been some tournaments over there, so there's going to be a bit of jet lag for some of these players. They are used to it, but it has to be said. thing from Al Gamdi's point of view he's only got one more match to play today after this one and what happens it's just day one of five in this phase so he would still have time to turn it round and what happens tonight he's just gonna go back and reflect on the day regroup and come back tomorrow in this format you certainly have the time to do that Yeah, and we've seen matches so far, Michael, where, you know, Alvin got away with one before, you know, the opening match against Earl, where he made a couple of mistakes. Jason, he made a ton of errors, but still managed to win. So, Khalid is very much still in this match, even though the signs are that he's not, but in a short race to five, you are more than capable of pinching a match or two. Rack five brought us the first dry break. It came from Van Boning. From there, Al Gamdi. Been very effective. He's going to feel a lot better now. For all our talk about how he's looked a bit nervous and unsettled, the fact is he's only one behind. He'll be breaking at 3 2 down. Wu Kun Lin looks as though he's finally going to get one on the board against Alex Pagalion. Median leading 4-0 there. Look at the ball that averts the whitewash. World Championship semi-finalist Wu Kun Lin straight back on the table after his 5-4 defeat to Shane Van Boning a little earlier Rock this six. afternoon. Call it dog. I'm due to break. Trailing by two racks to three. No, we still have a match here. Gandhi breaking and looking to level. He's really spinning the cue ball, so upon impact, it looks like it's it's not really got the power, but it is kind of working. What's the cue ball here? Really spinning this ball with right. No shot on the two ball, though. The safety side, the nine ball pool. It's a, it's a scary place to be, Michael. You know, many, many moons ago when I was playing, it wasn't really my uh, forte. Didn't work hard enough at it, don't get me wrong, but it's like now it's so difficult to try and play a good telling safety shot. And, you know, the players are 
very adapted kicking now. The jump cues have been made where anyone can jump over the ball. So it's a, it's a scary place to Excessive be when you've got to play safe. You're talking there about maybe not working enough in your safety game in your playing days, but it's a hard thing to work on, isn't it? Particularly on your own. It is, but, you know, working with Alex Laley for the two years with uh, the Moscone Cup team, you know, I, I just seen it all with different eyes. I was very much a lazy player, tried to play on natural ability, but, you know, at this level, when you're, when you're competing against workhorses, players that do it right, do it how you need to do it, if you want to be one of the best, you're, you're not going to get away with that. It's like this instance now. He's not got the hook, but the jump shot, I mean, this is just... Extension code. It's not really difficult as well. Let's say if you wasn't allowed to play the jump shot, you would have to kick at this or swerve it. But these days, the, the players are just so good with a short stick. And that puts pressure on the safety shot. defence of the world title came to a surprising end at the last 16 stage he was roaring past some of his early opponents but looking for a place in the quarterfinals he was beaten hill hill finish by Duong Quoc Hoang of Vietnam who has since beaten him again actually at the Las Vegas Open Shane's made a few errors in this match he's letting Khalid off the hook poor positional shot there really was kicking two rails trying to hit the top side of the six here to pot it or leave distance and he's hit that all wrong as well so I think there's a few pool players who are suffering with the old jet lag tell us a bit about Al Gamdi's makeup because this is a genuine really good chance to level the match Yes, there's just enough to be done there for it to be a bit of a test of nerve. Playing it in the left centre. Yeah, he's done well there. This is your typical nine ball pool shot. Playing it with right spin. Sending the cue ball below left centre. Using your two rails. This type of shot comes up a lot in the game. He's missed the pot, and he's gone near the scratch. He has hit that so bad. Well, we said that opportunity was going to tell us a lot about Al Gamdi. The answer is not an encouraging one from his point of view. No, and it's worrying because I was just building that shot, wasn't I? It's the shot that always comes up in this game. Complete deceleration there. Yeah, and we've said it before, haven't we? Some of the balls he's missing, he's missing them by large margins. That one less so, but nevertheless, the fact is, Algandi is straight back to the table. Well, I feel like today has just been a comedy of errors. We've seen it with Jason Shaw and Mellon. Now we're seeing SVB. It's all going on. Is anyone going to pot a ball? Jokes aside, they can be awkward, them playing out the jaws, playing it into a bit of a blind pocket. And from 3 1 down, Khalid Al Gamdi has leveled the match here. What a chance for him to perhaps beat one of the all time greats. It's 3 all.
more matches in on the main table today. We've already had three Hill Hill finishes and every chance we're going to see another one here in this clash of the generations. Shane Bamboni was 3-1 up against Khalid Al Gamdi, but he keeps letting his young opponent off the hook, and that's why it's now 3 all. Not quite got the breakdown, Shane, has he? We're so used to the one ball going in the pocket, but the last two or three. Let's have a look. Where's this one go? Yeah, it's going low. Dry breaks from him. Out of four so far. Where's the cue ball? He's drawn it Pass into hand. the side. Inexperienced because he didn't have to come Pass. over near the side rail. Just pot it and the two is practically over the pocket. A big turnaround going on over on the other table. Alex Pagalion was 4 0 up against Wu Kun Lin. It's now 4 2. Wu has got ball in hand for a pretty straightforward 2 9 combo to get back to only one behind. Race to five for the pool players is obviously very scary, but. For the viewer, matches can turn around. You always feel like there's, you're going to get that little bit of tension because, you know, if you're watching a race to 10, well, the fun starts when it gets to about 9, 8, doesn't it? So the fact that these matches can turn around quick sets itself up for a lot of close matches, and that's what we love. Well, the finish line is already in view as soon as the match begins, really, and that creates a unique sort of tension. Yeah, because table two's 4-3. This looks like it's going to go 4-3 to SVB. So both tables poised for a nice little finish. Even though this is a league format, every win matters, doesn't it, Michael? Yeah, and remember, they're not just playing to get through to the next phase because every win carries forward, so you're trying to set yourself up then to get through to the phase after that. Well, this time it was Al Gamdi's turn to let his opponent off the hook. After Van Boning's dry break, and the American is first to the hill at 4-3. I've already seen enough in this match to suggest, Carl, that if Al Gamdi loses this, he'll look back and think he's missed a big chance here. Yeah, and the fact that he lost his opening match of this year's event to Pagalion 5-1 will just put himself in a little bit of a sticky situation early on. Still got one more match to play today after this against Seo Seoa. The roughly midway through the evening session. For Van Boning, this is the end of his involvement in the afternoon session, but he will be first on table one tonight against Jason Shaw. What a treat that is. Rack eight. Kalitao Gamji to break, trailing by four racks to three. Now, I'm keeping an eye on the cue ball. I want to see if he's purposely really spinning. Yeah, look at the cue ball. It's got a lot of spin on that. Good chance he can pop the, the two, obviously. Three ball, he's tied up with a purple five. If that doesn't pot in any of the pockets, he's going to have to go into them. His last three break-off shots, he's averaged three balls down each time. If you're not watching table two, Pagalayan is at the table. He leads Wu Kun Lin 4-3. He's at the table, so he's got a chance to win the match. Yeah, it was 4-0 in front. Relieved if he can get that done and make it two wins from two. The breakout has gone wrong. He's going to have to play safe. Just hit that three a little too full.
Extension code. Prides himself on a good cue ball control, does Alex Pagaline. That's where he, he values his game at. It's all about feel, getting that cue ball around the table to leave himself perfect angle every time. Different style of player to Shane, who's shooting now. Shane's the big, powerful stroke. Likes to get the cue ball moving around and really attacks the table. Good safety shot there from Shane. Has he left the gap, though? There is a gap. Small opportunity for the youngster. Just when I was building Alex up there, you can see he's landed a little short on the eight. Should still be okay though. Khalid's made the three. Needs a cue ball to get away from this seven. Yep, it's held up, it's okay. Just as Pagalayan is. Yep, so both of these two players will have played two matches now for Wu Kun Lin. It's two defeats, two close ones, but two losses nonetheless. Alex it's Pagalayan though, he's played two and won them both. Even though Wu Kunlin has lost his opening two matches, he has gone down to Pagalayan and SVB. 5 4 5 3, and this is what can happen. This is a tester for the youngster. He's missed some balls in this match. That's better. That is a lot better. Played it more positively as well. Didn't try and overdo the cue ball. Trust in the cue action. Here's another look. Stayed very still. That's always a good sign. That incidentally is the end of Pagalion's involvement for today, so he'll be two out of two overnight. Wu Kun Lin still has one more match to play today. Another chance to get that first win on the board when he faces Chris Melly. No finished for this session on table two. Nina to themselves. Just had to be a little bit careful there because playing it into the side, he was trying to play it with right spin to use the two rails. He's okay. 3-1 down in this match. And he's won three out of four racks since then. And Khalid Al Gandhi has taken Shane Van Boning to a hill hill finish. Significantly though, it will be Van Boning with the break. Yeah, every match we've done so far, Michael, today, we've been treated to a hill hill thriller. Well, it's remarkable, really, that we're in this situation, isn't it? Because we seem to spend most of the match talking about how Al Gamdi was looking nervous, he was missing balls by a long way, and was letting Van Boning away with his mistakes, and yet here we are, 4-4. Yeah, I mean, just the fact that it's a short race, you know, you could make a case for this match should be over, but SVB has made mistakes, so has Khalid, so I think, in fairness, 4-4 is a fair result, but it is going to be SVB to break, and he is prone to making a lot more nine balls off the break than any other player I've ever seen. Purely down to the power he generates on the break. Plenty of power. The nine has stayed on the table. And what's he got here on the two? I don't think he can pot it. That's, what, that's what's going to matter here. Khalid will be sat in his chair, praying he can't see the potting angle. Got his wish. That's not the best shot he's ever played. Yeah, he was always going to get the distance, but he was trying to get the cue ball up behind the eight ball. Over short format of race to five to beat Van Boning would be a big landmark moment for Ogamdi and 
Indeed, if he was to win in these circumstances, he could go away and reflect to himself, well, I made that many mistakes and still beat a player like Shane Van Bowling. Imagine what I could do if I could cut out those errors. Yeah, it's a big point for both players, really, because Khalid will go one from one, as in one win, one loss. SVB will do the same, but SVB is playing Jason Shaw tonight, first up on table one, so intriguing. Going to be a chance for Shane this, though. Decided to go for the full table bank. Missed it, and he's left this on for SVB. Narrowly, you know, back Van Boning from this position all day long to see it out. Context of what we've seen in this match. Holding the presses for a few moments yet. Obviously, this event is played behind closed doors, same as last year. So there's only SVB, Khalid, and the referee out there, but Shane will still be feeling it. He's got a lot of experience. He's played in the Moscone Cup, God knows how many times, and he's played in big crowds. He's played big action games, exhibitions. He's done it all. He's got the T-shirt, but you still feel a little bit edgy when it's a final rack thriller. 16 Moscones he's played in. 16 in a row, in fact, and assuming he plays this year, he'll equal the all-time record. With Johnny Archer and Ralph Souquet. I think he'll be there, something tells it me. It seems a safe enough bet, doesn't it? This is a nice shot. What's the cue power Shane possesses? He's got to draw this back because he's straight. Is the cue ball hard enough? There it is. Just about. Yep, it's OK. It's more than OK, it's perfect. I know how El Gamdi will look back on this. He'll be pleased in one sense that he's made it so close, but he's got so many errors to look back on. Missed opportunities. He could have won this match. There's no question about that. But in the end, it's another Hill Hill victory for Van Boning. A 5-4 success for last year's world champion. The man who replaced him as holder of that title, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, will be up next in a few minutes' time against Earl Strickland. table diamond tables are designed and manufactured from the highest quality sustainable hardwoods utilizing world-renowned designs diamond tables are unparalleled for playability and durability after all they are designed by players for players
championship is being played with the new RMS tournament set. Featuring a unique molecular structure, it guarantees razor-sharp precision and unsurpassed longevity. Unquestionably the best pool balls in the world, this set is available in a TV and a value pack version, as well as in the new My RMF Ranger of Ball and Q cases. Now you can bring and play with the best ball set everywhere you go. My RMF, bringing new dimensions to your billiards experience. Of the Kazoo, Champion of Champions! Well, what a chance that was for Khalid Al Gamdi, the teenager from Saudi Arabia. Looked nervous early on, made a lot of mistakes, but still managed to turn it around from 3 1 down and level with Shane Van Bonian at 4 all. Need to make a key error in the early stages of the deciding rack. And so it was Van Bonian who emerged triumphant at five racks to four. So this is how it all looks, as you can see. Five players now are played 2 1 2, so already big progress towards securing their place in the next phase. At the other extreme, Wu Kun Lin, Earl Strickland, Khalid Al Gamdi, and Skylar Woodward all played two and lost them both. Strickland has a chance to finally snap that sequence here against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, one of three players we've not seen yet. So here we go then. The clash of the current world champion. And the man who's won that title more than anyone else, the three times winner, Francisco Earl Strickland. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz wins the luck. Sanchez Ruiz, winner of the, the World 8 track. ball and World 9 ball, and got Francisco very close Sanchez to winning the World 10 record. ball just a few days ago. Eklund Kachi emerging as the winner of that title for a second time. Fran's just waiting for Earl to stop updating his Instagram fans or whatever he's doing on his phone. What a character Earl Strickland is. What a player Francisco Sanchez Ruiz is and has been over the last 12 months or so. We always knew for a long time he was a very good player, but you look back to this time last year, put him, I think, even in the top ten players in the world. Now, as you alluded to in an earlier match, you would have to say he's the best of all of them at the moment. So consistent. Current US Open and world champion. Could be a very swift end to this opening rack. Yeah, this is not going to go down cold. well with Earl, the fact that it's going to be a quick rack, but Sanchez... Good bank shot there to give himself this chance, and he definitely is the best player, the best pool player on the planet right now. What he's doing is, well, he's just simply 
breathtaking Francis rifle, Francis isn't it? Because without winning a major, but just the fact that just how many he's won, and it's just unbelievable what he's doing. So, three shots played, and already he leads 1 0. 31 years of age, ranked number one in the world. Already on top going into the World Championship in Poland last month. Won that, and Shane Van Boning went out relatively early. I Means Sanchez Ruiz now has an enormous lead at the top. Points are still being added. They've been accumulating them since the start of 2022. And that will continue to be the case all the way through to the end of this year. And then we'll have our first full two-year ranking list. After that, the points will start to be taken off. But, of course, the bulk of his won't be coming off until well into 2024. The second rack, Earl Strickland to break, trailing by one rack to now. Apart from the lag, our first look at the 61-year-old. Well, he'll turn that different break cue there. He's got an array of cues in his corner. He looks like a golfer at the minute. Ball's close, that needs to hold up. Almost started with a real eyebrow raising result earlier today in the opening match on the main table. Took it all the way to a hill hill finish against Alban Ocean. Ended up losing five racks to four. Extension code. Strickland actually led 4-3 in that one. Ocean had the golden break then to take it all the way and came through. And since then, Strickland has lost another close one, 5-3 to Noyuki Oi. Well, he complains about luck, but... He's been fortunate there. He was, he was in a world of trouble. In fairness, kicking at that ball, but he's got to be happy with that. But he's not going to be happy with watching this. The jump shot from Fran. Earl Strickland hates the short stick. Yeah, if Fran makes this. Well, he's not. He's Foul missed shot. the ball altogether. Bow in hand. We were talking to him at lunchtime. Earl Strickland, one of the many subjects we covered in a relatively place. short period of time was jump cue, and you were raising the possibility of, well, what about if you had an allowance of one per match? Could you live with that? How do you think that would go down with the players? The players would be more than up for that. It, it's, it's a thing where, unless you actually play the game at a certain level, you're not going to appreciate it. You know, promoters and you know, TV fans or whatever, they, they don't really understand it, but when you're playing, you can't always play a hook and get the cue ball close enough to a ball to take out the jump shot. Sometimes you you have to play like a safety shot and just leave distance, get the balls round in a certain area. And the way they've made the jump cues in modern era it's just so easy to get the cue ball over another ball, so it's it's almost like a guaranteed hit. I know Fran didn't hit the ball then, but that's just how it feels. And when you're a player and you're in a match and your opponent just keep pulling out the jump cue, it can start to get to you a little bit. And it certainly gets to Will, we know that. But this is what the game's about. You've got to take your chances. Forget what's going on. Will Strickland, well, he's just missed with ball in hand. You were saying earlier he still puts in a lot of practice, but he doesn't play a lot of tournaments these days, Strickland, and I think we've seen signs of that today, that glimpses here and there, but he seems to undo himself with a, a shot like that that maybe gives away. 
certain amount of lack of sharpness through that lack of activity on the tournament tables. Yeah, and I think you've got to give respect to her. You know, I know we all have a laugh and a joke, and I've just spent the last hour with her upstairs, um, sat at the table chatting to him. You know, a great character to be around, but, you know, he's in his 60s. My mum's in her 60s. She sat watching Corey drinking cups of tea. You know, the man's 61 years of age, still playing pool at a high level. Yeah, it's not at the highest level that we see, but he still can do it at a very high level. Most English image imaginable, drinking tea, watching Coronation Street. Couldn't ever see that being Earl Strickland's scene. Well, Strickland had ball in hand, wasn't able to make the most of it. There was little doubt that he would be made to pay a heavy price for it. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz swiftly leads 2-0. You put it into words, Carl, just the level of confidence that must be oozing through Francisco with everything he's done in the last eight or nine months. Well, I can't because I've not done it to the extent he's well, done not, it. Not many people ever have. No, but I, I know what must be going through his head. You know, there's not millions of dollars on offer in the in the world of nine ball, but it's obviously at the best it's ever been right now. Because I've never right seen it as crazy as it is, it is right now. Pool's heading in the Rockstar. right direction. And obviously with the nine ball world tour moving forward, events are constantly being added as we speak. Even I'm sure this week we'll come out with some of the crazy tournament that we're all going to be going to. Hopefully it's somewhere like Barbados or something, you know what I mean? But it's just changing. And the fact that he has won so many big tournaments, but the, the money he's won, I mean. Well, he won over $260,000 last year. Now that was more than he'd earned in his whole career up to that point. Well, this is what I mean, and, you know, I'm not saying life's all about money, but it helps, doesn't it? It makes you feel relaxed. Everything's going to seem easy to Sanchez when he's at the pool table right now. Well, it must be counting his blessings that he's hit the form that's made him the best player in the world at the exact point in the game's history when you've got all these big money events, you can now make the most of it. And it is a consideration. They are professionals, and apart from winning big titles, which is where you start out, it's a chance to make yourself... Financially strong for life, if you can have a few years like that. Yeah, I never thought I would see Fran... I'm not saying he couldn't win the, the tournaments, because of course he could win. Oh, he's talented, but the consistency is shown. I never thought it was there, but it just shows you it's all about confidence, because years ago, because he's still a young man now, he was always prone to missing the odd silly ball, but you know, when you get that first big win, in an event, obviously you can just kind of kick on and that's what he's done. He's sort of steadily built up on a couple of Euro Tour events in 21 and then started last year with victory in the Derby City Classic and he's mentioned that a lot, how much confidence that gave him. Then of course he had the team win with Spain at the World Cup, he already reached the UK Open final by then and all of that just sent him into the last six months or so. With so much confidence took that on to win the US Open, became a Moscone player for the first time, and now, of course, champion of the world. It's been fascinating to watch, and this has been very Francisco pleasing Francisco to watch for his supporters, because he now leads 3-0.
Francisco Sanchez Ruiz has had two breaking racks so far in this match. Earl Strickland has not been to the table in either of them. And the man from Spain also won the rack in between. That's why Strickland is now breaking at 3 0 down. I just want to get one game. That's not really, it's in the break, good as you. I'm not lucky enough to win, so. Hang there, I just want to win one game. I'm not lucky enough to I win. I don't want to get skunked. That's the way to approach it. Yeah, I mean, he's still good enough to get himself in a position to win. But whether he can win is another story. I've seen that at the Moscow and Cup. He was up three racks against Shaw. I think he was three racks up against Alvin. He was definitely two racks up in his singles point. The wheels kind of fell off a little bit in both them singles points. That yeah, was the story of his Moscone, really, wasn't it? Got himself in good positions, couldn't see it out. Turned to the team after nine years away, and a year later than expected, because, of course, he was named in 2021 for Alexandra Palace, but had to pull out for COVID reasons. Played a good shot Earl there from the pink four to the five. That was very underrated. It's what like Earl likes to do this. It's not really what the, the modern game's about now. Spinning the cue ball round with power. That's his game. That's how he's grown up playing. I'm sure the game's changed over the years as he celebrates his first rack. Make sure you don't miss the nine now after that. But he was never going to, was he? And so Strickland runs out from the break. Open as a count, he trails 3-1. Dessa Slava doesn't look too impressed. I'm sure she's not used to this in the world of snooker. Around in the days of Peter Ebden. Earl Strickland, we were talking earlier about his massive Moscone Cup history. He's played in 15 of them. Just too short of the record. And nine times he's been on the winning team. Nobody has done more than that. Tony Archer shares that record of nine. They were also both on the team that tied. One and only Moscone Cup tie there's been. Strickland, the only American to be MVP in the Moscone Cup on three occasions. One behind the overall record held by Niels Fyen. 3-1 then to FSR. You can see the difference in the break, can't you? Sanchez is making the one. Earl isn't. There's a knack to the break. There's a certain way you've got to hit it. And if you're making the one a lot more than your opponent, well, you're going to do well to win any pool match because you're simply getting the first shot of the table. Even though this is not a carrying shot of the table, so it's going to be a push out if you've just tuned into nine ball for the first time ever. After the break, the very next shot, we can play what we call a push out. So you can push roll the cue ball wherever you want. You have to tell the referee. That's why you just heard Desi say push out called. Earl's simply going to have to play this shot or give it back. It's entirely up to him. Maybe if the two ball passes the eight, which yeah, it looks like there's a piece of the pocket. Maybe Franz just decided, Earl, you're knocking on a bit. I'm going to knock it in if you don't, buddy. Mind games. Go ahead. Yeah, and that's a <coughs> good summary there by example of a lot of the psychology that goes on with the push out. So it's been handed back. Someone's approach to this juncture of play is going to be vindicated in the next few moments. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying he, he has to play the two because maybe if he doesn't have a full pocket, he's no way going to try and pop the two. Yeah, he's just bumping up and down. He made a mess of this, though. He really has. Well, short of pace. Yeah, even the wrong line. Everything seemed to go awry there, but it, it's still OK. The three's not exactly over the pocket where this combination is unmissable. 
Well, that's even if he takes it on. I don't think he will. Little safety game. Not quite there. How would you say it was in his heyday? How much of a role did safety play <coughs> have in his great success in his glory years? Steady on. I wasn't about then, Michael. <laughs> what are you trying to do to me, pal? He said he's been winning tournaments for 40 years. Kept winning them until a relatively recent time. I think his game's just been built up of just pure attack, to be honest. Just all-out shot-making. That's what he prides himself on. He still plays very quick, doesn't he? He's not really all about this slow play life. Extension. Extension code. The greatest players across Q Sports tend to be the ones who are all out attack. It's certainly the case in Snooker with the two best ever, Ronnie O'Sullivan and Stephen Henry, both so attacking. Yep, that's what he can do. He can get down and, and make a shot happening. Cue ball's found the rail, that's why Earl's laughing, because that's going to make this shot difficult to get on the pink four, because that's going to be the ball after the red three. Yep, it was always going to be difficult, but he does have a bank shot. I don't know if he can hold the position for the purple five once he plays the bank. I think the cue ball's coming down the left side of the table. So if he plays the bank, he's going to have to get the cue ball moving. Unless he can kind of cinch and just hold position. Maybe play it with a bit of spin as well. Yeah, that's what he's tried. But he's missed the bank. Where's the four going to finish? Earl's turn to get a bit of fortune. You do get lucky, Earl. You're lying to me upstairs. Forward to seeing you try to make that case to him after the match. Yeah, that might be interesting viewing <laughs> Is he trying to kick and stick? Is that shot there? Yeah, good effort. Oh, he could see the potting angle. He could see the potting angle. Where's the cue ball going to finish up? I knew that's what I would get right there. That's what you played a certain length of time. Your luck's gone. Mine's there gone. he is. <laughs> Back bemoaning his fortune again. He's saying once you play a certain length of time, your luck is gone. I guess that's an acknowledgement. Maybe he used up his share earlier in his career. Fran's got to be enjoying this match, though. You know, it's not every day that you get to play Earl. You know, he knows ball. Earl's achieved so much years ago, probably <laughs> before Fran was even born. So the fact that Fran's the number one player in the world now and he's, he's had this opportunity to play Earl Strickland in a race to five, why not? Smile, enjoy it. Strickland, the only player to win back-to-back -back world titles, which Sanchez Ruiz will, of course, be attempting to emulate next year. He'd done that before, as you say, FSR had even arrived on this planet. Well, I'm not sure what Fran was trying there, but it's not come off, and it's another chance for real. Pop this ball, guaranteed a shot on the six. Is it he fat though? That's why I miss because I'm looking at him. He wasn't moving. I know, but I think he's gonna move. <laughs> Earl just said, I miss because he's moving. So Desi says he, he wasn't moving. Earl says, well, I know, but I thought he was gonna move. Yeah, and with that comment, I think he diffused a little bit of tension that was building up there. That was a strange moment. Reminiscent of Alex Higgins talking about referee John Williams at the Crucible standing in his line of thought. Sports got one of them.
Things are getting a little interesting out there. This is what Earl does. This is just the way he plays the game. This is why people love it to watch him. This is just this is just the way it is. Barry Hearn after one of the many pleasant incidents that have surrounded Strickland over the years. You're going to let him continue to play in the tournaments? And he said, absolutely, we always want him in there. He guarantees drama and unpredictability. Oh, well, can you believe that? He was 3-0 down. He had done all the hard work towards getting back to only one behind. Instead of which, instead of 3-2, it's 4-1. Sanchez Ruiz is first to the hill. We oh, had so much going on in that rack, Carl. Yeah, I mean, this is just the modern era. You don't play the nine ball like that anymore, I'm afraid. You play the drag shot with a cue ball because if you don't, it's as clean as you would have liked. The pocket will just swallow it up. They'll got down and try to fire it in. It's just not the way to play. In of potting nine balls, it was a strange end to the World Championship. When he wasn't allowed to pot the nine ball, Sufi came forward and conceded. So we look at this miss again. Now, I'm not suggesting Sufi had any bad motives in mind there, but it was a little unfortunate, I thought, that Sanchez Ruiz didn't get the opportunity Why? to pot the winning nine ball. Sufi came out and congratulated him. Who's the woman? Yeah, Run I know what you're six. saying, but. I think the main thing is you've just won, haven't you? Yeah, it is, one. yeah. But you want to have that moment. It's only a minor thing, but. It's worth commenting on. Okay, here we go. Four one down. This is earning the money today in this match. Whenever you referee Earl Strickland, you know. Suppose you've got to smile yourself because just weird things happen. She'll have been told, won't she? She'll have been told what to expect and will have been ready for it. That may well be Strickland's last shot. <laughs> yeah, if you are, uh, if you, if you was a coach and you was just watching this match, and you didn't know Sanchez was, you know, the world number one, the world champ, you, you would be looking at it thinking, well, Earl's just doing himself no favors. He's talking himself out of the pots, out of the racks. He's getting himself wound up. Another lady referee, Michaela Tab, who took charge of one of Strickland's matches at a World Championship some years ago, and was uh, so embarrassed by his own conduct that he actually, for his next match, brought some flowers into the arena for her. Well, I think after this match, he might be bringing flowers for Francisco Sanchez Ruiz because, you know, Fran's one of the greatest sportsmen we have on tour, so there'll be no funny business from Fran. Looks as though these are the last moments of this opening session. Six matches down on both tables. First to involve Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, Sanchez and he's won it comfortably. Ruiz, Gets his first match. point on the board in the table. He wins against Earl Strickland by five racks to one. So that concludes the play for this session. And first up on the main table in the evening play will be Jason Shaw against Shane Van Boning. I'd certainly want to bring you back here in around 90 minutes' time. Shaw, as you can see, is one of the players who's won both of his matches so far today. A couple of players we've not seen yet, Sanyan Palovanovic. We'll see him against Scarlett Woodward this evening. And also Chu Chi Yu, the women's world champion. She'll be playing Earl Strickland. Talk about a baptism of fire in this Premier League. That'll be her first match coming up later this evening. And as you can see, Strickland, bottom of the table. Played three, lost three, but he's still got another 12 matches to go. There have been flashes there. If he can play his way in and shake off a bit of that rust, maybe he'll have a chance to get through to the next phase.
So that is the end of our first session of play. Hope you've enjoyed it and that you'll rejoin us in around an hour and a half from now for sure against Van Boning.